Work hard every day, yeah. You know we don't play, yeah. This is where I stay in the studio every day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was in the city going down, trying to blow. Everything changed when I learned to let it go. Hopping on stage, I ain't in it for the show. Only got one life. You know I'm coming with it, finna pick it up. Ain't no slowing down, go to Pluto with it, hit him up. With the truth of the gospel, every instrumental. This is spiritual warfare. Press the pedal to the metal. Please don't think about money, can't make you rich. 24 7, I'm with my wrist. What the fuck, them, 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 them. Shame on me when I reminisce, deal. Let me stay down, cause you hit him, miss kill. Get in my face if you know you ain't real. Speak up, but I don't know how you feel. What up, gangster? What's up, dude? <laughs> How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Check out my hat, bro. Hey, okay. I see you. What? Yeah, dude. Buy a bunch of these and sew that on there. Even though that's hey. and super glue. It's okay. Because it's a 1V hat. 1V yeah, on hey. the hat. 1V <laughs> on the hat. <laughs> right? Yeah, I got mine too. Oh, dude. I got to get one. It's, oh, man. It's All right. We got, some, we got some people. Hey. Yo, what up? Uh, thank you so much for joining us, man. Or joining me. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen you in person, and uh, I'm super excited we get to spend an hour or so together. And um, we'll just wait a couple minutes for everyone to get in, get in the chat. Yeah. Go ahead and comment where you guys are watching from. Uh, let us know where you guys are tuning in from. And we're so thankful you're here. My name's David Lantman, and I really wanted to interview my friend. 1v on the track and really tap into his um his heart uh, when i was able to sit down with him um there was something different about him than anyone else i've ever met before um and he really reminded me of jesus so not 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 just like you know with his good looks and everything but <laughs> <laughs> okay this is not starting very well but it froze and i'll take that as a sign of like not to talk about jesus's looks um <laughs> But no, really, dude, I noticed a difference with you. I, um, I'll get into that in a little bit, but yeah. um, Instagram home. Okay, okay. Yeah, they at home. They at home. Hey, look, we got filters and stuff. Okay. I didn't know this. How do I get my filter going? Oh, that looks cool. I have to keep this one. Yeah? Like a VHS one. <laughs> dude, I was just getting down to your... Uh, um, never left official music video. That thing's tight. I can't believe I didn't see that one. I would have used that for promo. Oh, yeah. You know what? Um, that actually has uh, audio that um, I think that I put on before I got it, like, mixed and mastered by somebody else. So mm -hmm. that's, like, a little exclusive there before the official dropped, so... You have a lot of content out, dude. I love that. I love that you're just, uh, I'm excited to tap into your creative process because uh, just from what it looks like, you're you're releasing things everywhere. I saw like different versions of the videos and um, I can learn so much about that. And I think that we're going to have a lot of people here interested in that too. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are with 1V on the track. He is a um, CHH artist. He's a producer. He produces beats. Uh, you sell these beats, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, produces but... and sells beats. Um, he's got his own studio. He's a dance choreographer, a dance instructor. He can dance himself. Um, and he makes his own beats. He writes uh, raps to those beats, releases those. And um, so he's a dancer, a producer, a rapper, uh, a man of faith. He's a husband. And he is... I'm hesitant to use the word youth leader because, like, after I got to know you, it seems like you're more more than a youth leader in, in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, just by hearing some of your your passion and your drive and, and your missions. So, and and when I sat down with him, I felt heard. I felt heard, and I, I knew I was listened to. And I'm the type of person that can talk and talk and talk and are, are rarely in it for responses. I just want to get things off my chest. And when I sat down with him um, that day in Davenport, you listened to me just vent, bro, about like my childhood, not knowing my real dad. What's up, yeah. Tommy? Um, and 
I just felt really heard and understood. And that brings a, an overwhelming sense of peace to someone when they know that they've been heard. And then later when I found out you worked with youth, I'm like, of course. And then I was like, I'm so thankful, Lord, because they are going to benefit from what I just experienced from. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, God, you know? So um, I'm not sure if uh, there's anything else you want to say. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Um, well, I just had a birthday, so I'm 27 now. Hey. Eesh. Uh, so I'm just grateful for another year, man. And um, I'm married, uh, about to have our three-year anniversary in November. Uh, so, you know, I've just been blessed with, uh, with many different things. Uh, you know, just every day is a blessing. And I try to have a grateful heart uh, for you know, everything, even hard situations, it, you know, at times it, it's definitely, it can be a little discouraging, but, um, you know, just knowing that I can count on God, man, and like, and, and knowing that God is good and has bigger plans for my life than I could ever imagine, um, you know, it gives me peace, and, and especially during those difficult moments when, you know, things come up uh, left and right, and you don't know, like, you know why or what the reason for it is but um you know definitely been on my faith walk for for a while now uh since i was 19 oh, around so more seriously i've always known god growing up uh, or known about god learned grew up in the church for the most part uh my mom started taking us to church at around 10 years when i was like 10 uh so grew up learning a lot through her growing in her spirituality and then also being around people of faith and uh, just heard so many Bible stories, so many lessons, uh, but didn't apply them until I started like actually maturing and adulting. And um, I've seen the benefit of living a, you know, a wholesome life. Um, definitely not perfect. You know, the only perfect one that lived was Christ, was Jesus. Um, and, you know, I try not to, uh, beat myself up too much about, you know, the the mistakes that I make, knowing that, you know, I'm I'm on the same boat with the rest of the world. But it also doesn't give me an excuse to go out and uh, and do, you know, who knows what. So, it's uh, it's kept me from a lot of trouble. It's kept me from uh, a lot of hurt, and it's opened my eyes to opportunities each and every day. You know, the, the little conversations we have with people that we think it's random. Like, you know, today I, I was just working with a student uh, who I haven't seen in like, I don't know how many years, four or five years now. Uh, so it's like special moments like that, that, uh, you know, just make this life worth it. Uh, so I just threw a lot at you, man. I don't know if that's anything uh, that helps. Uh, I love art, old type of art. Uh, I actually, my first art form was drawing. Um, really? I used to draw Dragon Ball Z characters. Oh, bro. <laughs> Characters and, uh, you know, and eventually grew uh, a love and a passion for dance and music. And, and now we're here getting interviewed by by the amazing David Lentman. Oh, I appreciate it, man. But I'm right there with you, you know. And, like, I, I love how you said um doesn't give you an excuse to, to go out and just, you know, live in rebellion. Like, we talked about what does freedom in Christ look like? And... You know, if people are approaching everything like a list of rules, it doesn't feel so free. But, right. um, you know, Psalm 119 and, and the Bible really argues that the boundaries that God places around us lead us into a deeper freedom. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, like, it's not free to, like, you know, I like what you said there. Um, what was I flipping to? I was going to show you that you're not alone with uh, the... Um, Am I wasting time? Yes, I'm wasting time. <laughs> draw two? What? You draw two? Well, yeah, I, I, there was something in this notebook that I noticed I drew not too long ago. Uh, yeah, I draw mostly Sonic the Hedgehog, bro. Hey. And uh, I actually just found this at Meyer not too, like, last week. I didn't realize it was a Sonic, a Metal Sonic tech deck. But anyways, this isn't about me. It's not about you either, Moth. There's a Moth on the ring light trying to look all glamorous. Hey, there you um, go. <laughs> um, do not store treasures on heaven where moth and rust destroy. Mm. Um, 
but I, yeah, so thanks for sharing about that, dude. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot about your relationship with God, hopefully, because I love God's stories, dude. They give me warm and fuzzies. Um, warm fuzzies. Uh, how did we meet? Do you have any uh, first impressions of, uh, do you want to kind of walk the viewers of how we met, like where and, and why? <laughs> uh yeah so we met uh during the extreme tour you had you were on a, a stop where you guys actually stopped in davenport and i was uh a part of uh hosting you guys and um y'all actually stayed at the dance studio where i was at the, at the time and um you know we were just i was actually i think i knew maybe like two or three different people from that leg but um you were like one of the new people that I haven't met before. And I'm always interested in meeting new people. I'm always like uh, trying to hear people's stories. And uh, to me, it it, uh, it broadens my horizon and my understanding of people and culture and uh, just God, you know. So um, I think when I met you, like, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know what kind of music you made. I didn't know um like your background or anything i didn't even know how old you were um you know i thought you were like uh you know just like some chill dude a skater like you know you got that skater hair uh which i used to have back in the day too i saw i was looking at that today <laughs> <laughs> i have i've had all types of hairstyles but you know man i just you know i thought you were a, a cool dude uh, once we got to talking though i was like you know i could hear your your passion and your heart for growing and um, and just learning, um, and then also you know you uh, you know for for your obedience for God. Uh, so I really you know appreciated our conversation uh, when you know we were just sitting there at, in my office, you know, just talking, chopping it up, um, and you know I got to learn that you're actually a really dope singer, and uh, you know you do cover songs also, and you know you just talented dude um but you know i think first impression was just like i don't know you know just i i, I don't really have any expectations when i meet people so uh just off your looks you look you know like a cool dude so I'm, you know always interested in getting to know people so uh you know we had that conversation and then from then on like you know we've been in touch for a while and uh you know phone calls texts uh interacting on social media you know uh which is a, a huge blessing for me to be able to meet people from all over the country all over the world through the internet uh through the tour um you know so uh, i'm just blessed to be able to you know be part of your experience your journey man well uh i appreciate all the kind words dude like i um i had some first impressions dude i was like i was super so I was impressed. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, because the dancing is something that I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to incorporate into my set for a long time. And uh, I've, I've been kind of in this mode of like transitioning out of being that guy that sits in his songs to really trying to live out what my recordings sound like. And I thought you were really chill because uh, I remember talking with you and Mike up upstairs, like outside of the dance studio. And I remember going in there and just chilling with you in there and showing you my, one of my old secular songs that I was really proud of called Proposition. And I was like, dude, I wish that I can find, you know, high quality, you know, beats that sound like this and use that for my Christian music because I don't want to have to pull this song up every time I'm trying to like really uh, stand out or like pop audibly. And uh, you you were just very non-judgmental towards the lyrics. You were like, yeah, bro, like I understand. And um, I was so interested in your story and really at, when someone listens to me, as long as you did, I, I think we, we had a, a talk down at one of the kitchen tables in the center and uh, we had a, a few talks. When you just listened to me, as long as you did, you really won my respect and that really goes a long way. And I, I'm going to be talking about the approach that you take. Um, a little later in the interview and asking you about that because it's super special to me that you don't have expectations when you meet somebody. Um, I think that a lot of times people can feel like they're, they're a project or that there's some hidden motives behind someone's friendship. 
and uh, what a what a just a great way to start off a friendship. So I appreciate that about you. Um, can we? Can I ask you about your dancing? Yeah, man. For it. It's it's like I'm just saying because like when I was watching a Backstreet Boys documentary and they were asked about uh, what do they think about these upcoming boy bands and. And they they were talking about One Direction and they were, they were naming off some like of this age. And then they were asked about BTS, right? Is that like a, yes. a boy band? Like, And they said, well, at least they're doing it right because we always wanted to incorporate dancing and singing together. But a lot of the boy bands nowadays, like One Direction, they're not doing the dancing. And that's super special. And there's something about when I watched the Backstreet Boys, when it was like in the early 90s or, or late 90s, I mean, or even like the last few years on Ellen, when they're lined up and there's something visual uh, yeah. that's attached to the audio, it, it really, it makes a bigger impact for me than just listening. And so I was like, man, like I hope that one day maybe you can help me learn moves for, like you can help me choreograph, you know, dances for my songs and things. And so um, selfishly, I'm like, all right, Lord, what can I, what can I, glean from this dude and what how can I utilize his gifts but but um then I learned about uh your hesitancy to make your gifts all about you and you know I wanted to say before we begin we were talking on the phone we had a couple conversations on the phone one was with a friend of mine that really wanted to get into rapping and he would come over and, and to be honest, it's a friend that I was really having a hard time making time for because I feel like, man, if I'm going to grind and even like trying to be pleasing to the Lord, I'm going to push myself and my product and my brand as far as I can, but then I don't make time for others. And when I see you and I see everything you're doing, you're always putting others before you and, and, and I don't see any lack. And I think that God is honoring that and not that I'm going to do it so that he puts me forward but like it, it's really convicting to me because that's what the Bible teaches you know uh, in Philippians it says like Christ did not come to be served but came to serve and, and uh, consider others more important than themselves you know he didn't count equality with God something to be used towards his advantage didn't walk around saying I'm God but he humbled himself to the point of a servant and even to death on a cross and that is a meaty <laughs> thing to have as a young artist like yourself and and I think that no wonder you're making a difference in the community um but you had said on the phone you had said you know there's there's power in like promoting other people and you know I don't know if we had talked about that bible verse that said uh you know let others praise you hmm. um I think we might have mentioned but that that's that's the vibe you were sending my way is like you know there's there's joy in promoting other people. Like, you know, you don't have to promote your own thing all the time. And so it was like, I had downtime and I, I did this, uh, my first interview and I'm like, you know what, this is very fulfilling. And I remembered our talk and I remembered watching you FaceTime with my friend and really pour into this friend sitting next to me. He's in my apartment by my recording gear and you're miles and miles away. And he's, I'm watching him just, uh, all of his hardness kind of melts away and watching you interact with him. And, and you're saying things like, Oh, just reach out to me anytime. And I'm like, this is this, you've been such a great example for me um, as far as humility, you know? So praise God for that, dude. Um, so you're a dance instructor or are you a choreographer? What do you call yourself? Uh, choreographer, dance instructor, performer, um, you know, uh, I actually, you know, I, I guess like this can, you can start like going into how I started dancing. Um, I actually didn't even want to start dancing when I started. I was a really? kid that, <laughs> yeah, people always get thrown off by that. Cause you know, I've been performing all over the country and stuff. But, um, when I was 15, like, you know, we, my family would, would go to quinceañeras, family parties, weddings and stuff. And my mom had, you know, her friends who had daughters and they would invite me to come up and dance like Mexican music, you know, cumbias, uh, bachatas, all that. And I was so shy. I was like, nah, nah, I'm good. Like, no. Um, and eventually they needed a, a, an extra guy for a quinceañera to step in. 
I just happened to be there with my uncle who was in it. I wasn't in it. I was just on the side, like went with him because I had nothing better to do. And <laughs> I ended up being with like good rhythm. Like I could follow along. I, you know, like the moves were easy to me. Uh, and some of the other guys were struggle, like, you know, like staying on beats, like, you know, when to switch, counting, making the counts. Um, so that kind of snowballed into me being in another Keens. And then my friend had a, a Keens and she did hip hop choreography. We uh, evolved into me uh, practicing in my living room, learning uh watching Jabberwocky dance videos, America's Best Dance Crew, uh, you know, like learning how to break dance, learning how to do the robot, you know, tutting, which is like, um, you know, shapes with your hands and stuff. Um, and I eventually performed at my high school talent show. Uh, the first time was with my friend. The second time was by myself. And that's when I started diving into, like, mixing music and, like, software i think i was what was i using uh i can't remember the software i was using but it was like just some audio thing um and i mixed my own music went on stage performed this where the shades because i wear shades sometimes this is where the shades came about and the hat because i was like so shy so scared <laughs> i wanted i face as much as possible um and i've actually performed in like a full-on mask like i was just goofy too so you know uh whatever whatever i could do to make people laugh i, I would do and um started performing people started noticing started inviting me to dance classes uh, learn to travel and to eventually start teaching um so the process took a while took a few years but um you know, once I got into the studio and, and learned about, uh, you know, background dancers, people like who uh, teach Justin Bieber how to dance, who teach Justin Timberlake how to dance, like these people, you know, come from where we come from. And they are eventually, you know, they get so good, they travel to L.A. and they get booked for a gig to be in a music video, to go on tour with these artists. Um you know, build those relationships. Uh, so that was kind of like the route we were going. My friend and I, uh, we were actually really well known here in the community. Um, we had to switch our name uh, a while ago because of many, many different things that happened. But, um, you know, we were like making strides. And eventually we ended up uh, like going our separate ways he wanted to go uh, audition for like movies and all types of different things in california um which i supported you know like that's what you want to do bro like go for it like i'll hold it down down here so i kept dancing um and i kept teaching i kept performing uh, definitely always had a heart for the youth so always had them involved um you know, especially uh, the kids that were with us for a long time, just always wanted to have them have something to do and um, and have something to look forward to, you know, like accomplishing yeah. things. That's awesome, but, yeah, man. That's a I'm, long story there, but. Well, so I can't see the top bar of my phone, and so I keep trying. It just got a 20% warning. So I... I'm trying to figure out what to do because I can't tell if it's charging or not because it's one of those finicky cables. And uh, it doesn't die during our interview. Right. Yeah, I don't know. How about the sound? Hang on, the sound. You know, the... Oh, this is so unprofessional. I'm sorry, sir. Hey, it's all good, man. You know, technology be like that. Um, I have... I know what to do. Is B. Ah, what up, sir? I'm gonna be on charge real quick, bro. I gotta grab it. It's gonna be worth it. Yeah, go for it, bro. I'll be here. All right. Um. So yeah, I'll give you the door. Let me just make sure that I'm gonna drag this down.
nineteen percent, but it's plugged in, baby. All right. All right, cool. Um, dang, dude, like people that knew Justin, like people that taught Bieber and taught Justin Timber, like, like you actually met them or like you, that's like you were describing that that type of position and what they do. Yeah, uh, so we would go to Chicago and at any time, like any of them, like uh, Justin Bieber, uh, Beyonce or uh, whatever big major artist, their choreographers or their background dancers would uh you know, go into the local dance studios and teach workshops. Um, so we would go and learn from them, you know, learn their, their choreography, take their classes and stuff. Um, eventually, we tr traveled to California, to L.A., where the major dance studios are at, uh, major the choreographers are at, too, artists. Um, so we would train there, New York, you know, we just travel and train with as many people as we could. Um, and, you know, just network, meet people, get out there. We were very unique because we, it was two of us. We were a duo. Uh, and this was like before social media dancing was popping. Uh, it kind of started like blowing up by the time that we were like, you know, already in it for a while. But, um, you know, God just had a different plan for us. Um, you know, so I started doing music, and uh, I just see the power in, in the music also, in the influence that it has. Uh, dance is definitely a lot more fun to watch, a lot more entertaining, mm -hmm. but they need music to dance to, you know, they need a soundtrack, they need, um, yeah. you know, the visuals. Yeah. So. I, I'm going to be asking you more when we get into, like, graphic design and stuff, but, like... Yeah. You had said, you know, you had this event and so you ended up doing the audio for yourself. And that's another thing that I think that reminds me about myself when I look at you is that you're multifaceted. You're you're kind of doing a lot of the stuff solo. And I think that's that's really helpful to know. Um, at one point I got put in at the objectives on the extreme tour and they started introducing me to all of these people uh, producers, promoters, songwriters, and, and I had a hard time because I, I've i been alone and I've tried to do all of that on my own. And so when it came to being a team player, it was really hard for me. Um, I'll ask you a little bit more about that in a bit. Yeah. So how about, me, how about uh, dancing as a therapy? Uh, you had said that you didn't want to, initially you didn't want to dance. So my, I was going to ask you if like maybe you were running from something or like, uh, finding an escape in dance as you began to dance did you find out that there were any therapeutic aspects to it like um certain emotions that were being fulfilled like can you can you open up a little bit about that um so when i started dancing i didn't really uh like see too much of that uh just because like i like i initially i didn't want to dance so i did it more as of uh you know people needed a person to be in their quinceanera uh so you know just in it but as eventually as i matured as i grew in dance as i learned to choreograph as, as i learned to freestyle and move freely um i realized that it does a lot for you uh it benefits uh, you benefit a lot from dance um and not just dance but also the music that you dance to um to clear your mind to work through things to um you know, move your body. Uh, I've learned this for myself is that when I'm moving, when I'm active, I feel more energized throughout the day than when I'm, you know, just chilling, sitting all day, laying down or whatever. Um, you know, I feel uh, more accomplished, more fulfilled. Um, and, you know, it does a lot for, for my mental state when I actually get to dance, get to move. Um, it helps me just you know, continue to stay creative, uh, you know, even if I'm just, like, practicing my own songs that I'm dancing to, like, trying to come up with routines, you know, visualizing, planning, like, so much happens during those moments that, uh, that I, I'm not even aware of at times, but, um, you know, it's helped me out throughout the years. Uh, once I matured, once I, like, realized that it could help me that way, but at first it was just, you know, just almost like a chore, that's cool, man. Uh, yeah, it's hard for me not to be envious. So I, 
I actually called one uh, V and I, I texted him. I'm like, dude, I've got to learn how to shuffle. And I told myself like, Lord, like, please help me learn how to shuffle because a big part of it was like, I wanted to be ready for the extreme tour just to, um, without the guitar, I'm going to be engaging. But like, if I'm not going to be covering Christian rap music and I'm doing my own songs, like I, I want to be able to, and plus like Torin Wells and everyone just seems to have these moves. So I'm, I'm looking on Instagram, seeing the different, uh, alterations of the running man and i'm like this is nuts and they're doing it so fast so i was like hey are these shoes gonna be all right and and so you were i was trying to ask you like which shoes were the best and your answer was surprisingly very casual you were like uh well you know what i just watched your unboxing video of the nike so you'd said that you were when you find one that's comfortable you just wear it till it's like like dead or whatever you said yeah all but, but you said that, um, you know, you perform in different shoes than the ones you practice in. And so you, you said you had a comfy pair and then also something else. Um, but yeah, so I, um, I kind of felt that when I started, uh, you know, playing the YouTube videos on my big screen TV and, and taping, you know, I taped to the carpet and I was doing the running man. Now I've got the running man down and I feel it's awesome. I've done the running man in a public grocery mart last week for some kids that's funny and um i did it at like a wedding recently and so it's just it, i do get that you know i feel fulfilled because like for me it's like man i want to keep engaged uh with i want to keep my mind engaged because i don't want to be slothful and zeal and just kind of sitting around and, uh you know idle mindedness is the devil's playground right idle hands yeah um, now I'm really interested in the process of like when I see a one V video and I see you're dancing to your own song, how does that happen? How do you integrate dance moves into your song? Like what are the conversations you have? Are you, are you like, um, I mean, do you, do you have a dance that you already know? And then you're just like, I'm going to put that to this song or how do you integrate your dancing into the one V experience? We'll call it. What we, what we as consumers get from 1v like how is that because normally people are just like i've got a song i'm practicing it i'm gonna perform it and that's just the world i come from because it's like bar gigs concerts and stuff and and yeah. to have someone dancing and singing their own stuff like to me that's like whoa <laughs> you know because i see that stuff on tv and it's like that's theatric mm -hmm. how, how do you integrate it um so it's very hard to dance and perform your own music. Um, and I just, you know, learned that as I, I go along. Um, I have this song called Elevator, which is actually the very, like, the second song that I ever wrote and recorded, like, ever, like, officially. Um, and... I was always looking for music to be able to make a dance up to. Um, yes, sir. Uh, you know, making music that I can dance to, that I could choreograph to, that I can teach the kids uh, during dance class. And the reason that came about was because back in the day, our YouTube videos, our dance videos were getting blocked uh, on YouTube because of the music we were using. Mm they don't block it anymore they just don't give you adsense like you you don't make money you can't monetize those videos it's funny but you say that and you might be interested to know that i was going live for an hour here before the live and i was playing nothing but one v music and instagram popped up and said and this is really good to know it's like um you've reached your limit we would suggest that you don't play any more recorded music oh um, Otherwise, like, so if you go any further, we're going to make sure this is deleted and never posted again. And I'm like, well, I think we're both going to be interested in knowing that. So they're trying yeah. to make sure you get paid, buddy. All right, keep going. <laughs> right. So YouTube used to do that. They used to block your videos so nobody could see them. Now they let you uh, upload them. Like I uploaded a dance video to a uh, Holby song. And Love it. It's Loved that. Loved you know, that. No, it's <laughs> So I don't now, understand how you went into the the freaking animation and like the picture was like shh, it was like what I was all like what the heck like I was eat, if I was eating a bologna sandwich dude I probably would have been choking. <laughs> Shout out to uh, my homie Joe. Uh, we always link up and shoot dance videos, and that was just one that um, that I recorded, and we came up with the concept on the spot. We saw the giant glass wall. I always wanted to do something with that. 
um and we're like oh well how about we shoot the second part since there was like a transition on that song we shoot it and and then you just record the reflection of it and you know it, that's just how it came about it's he, a very urban dance studio because like in the studio aren't you watching yourself too so you're almost you almost like transitioned from urban life to like i'm in my comfort zone now yeah yeah like in the reflection but it doesn't look like a reflection because of the effect and then also um you know it's yeah so a lot of the time um if it's like a song that i can make a dance to like i'll start messing with it um what i've been doing lately is i just i've just been like releasing music and kind of letting the music sit um uh, so that i can then make a dance to it and record a dance video um uh, like either dance video or like official music video like might be multiple um i've been hearing about different types of content for your songs um you know it can be a lyric video it can be an acapella it can be an acoustic it can be uh official music video unofficial music like you can have so many versions of the same song and one of it might be the one that takes off so <laughs> i'm thinking things uh as far as like making different types of videos i have yet to create a lyric video for like any of my my own songs uh i've had a lyric i got a lyric video for my king with uh just robert and uh andrea uh, andrea yep yeah. um uh, so you know like different things that are coming up but i that's so weird because like i the those are the hardest things for me to make and it seemed like that would be easy for you, but you're doing official videos and the lyric videos. Like, I, I'm not complaining, bro. You're you're very fulfilling to watch. <laughs> yes. So but you're, you're, you're trying to fill those. You're trying to exhaust your creativity in every way you can, which is super awesome. I didn't mean yeah. to interrupt you when you were talking about Facebook, like, um, you know, or YouTube deleting the the audio and stuff. But oh yeah, so uh, that you know that pushed me to start making beats that pushed me to start making music to start looking into the music part of it like i've been messing with beats for a long time um but it wasn't until like 2018 that i started to actually take it kind of seriously kind of mm -hmm. felt better about my production like mm -hmm. it's on my soundcloud that i posted way before like i started writing music that i, I look back i'm like yeah, I needed I needed work, you know. Like, it, there's some beats in my um in my projects that I'm like, eh, like. If you guys are just joining us, so I'm with One V on the track. He's he's uh we just got done talking about his dancing and uh, his choreography, and um, and now we're gonna be segueing into uh produ his producership or like how he produces music. He produces beats and. Uh, so tell us more about the beat making, uh, because I've done a little bit of it here and there, but uh, I don't have a comfortable workstation in order to like continue that. And I just don't have a desire to push that kind of stuff out. I was next to you and watched you make, Yeah, I think it was Enemies, the, yeah. you were about to drop the, you were like, and that was, uh, it, it's just really crazy to see, dude. Like just as crazy as seeing the dancing was the beat making. What, Help us hop into the head of a, a beat a beat maker right now. You know what, man? Sometimes um, when you're having fun, uh, you'll you'll come up with the best ideas. Um, if you try to go in it with like, I mean, if you're good, if you if you got technical uh, experience, you got like you know you're technically you know trained with the music like that's different i think for me i'm not like a classically trained musician like i don't know how to play the piano like that i don't know how to i play some guitar chords like i know something about chords but uh so i'm limited in that area so i try to just have fun with it um i start off with either a melody or uh with an, like an idea if there's like a, a song or a tempo that I like, which I like fast tempos. I like different tempos. Right now I'm like still trying to figure out, you know, what like my sound is, like what my signature sound, you know. Oh, we'll talk about that. Yeah. I, you I got some activities planned for tonight. 
Okay. Uh, so, you know, trying to figure that out in my, um, you know, my go-to is always fast up 808s, like kicks, like heavy, um, like trap. I really enjoy trap music, like simple lyrics, but heavy beats, like dope beats. Um, and tricky hi-hats. Hi-hats, yeah. It's, it's, it's just always been easier for me to dance to, you know, like that's always kind of been like what I see, uh, that takes off um definitely adding a you know the lyricism to it that makes it a positive encouraging song so it's not just like any other trap song that's out there Uh, you're taking into consideration what you would want to dance to when you make an instrumental when you make a beat yeah definitely sometimes i'm just like experimenting with stuff i'm like man let me try making a slow sad song are those the ones that end up coming up going up for sale (laughs) Actually, no, I, I made a couple of songs to them that are actually, like, good, but I haven't released them. And uh, uh, some of the ones that end up going for sale are songs that I start working on, and then, like, I just don't don't finish. Or uh, songs that, uh, like, beats that I make with certain producer or certain artists in mind, uh, not even myself. But I could, you know, I could make a song out of any of the beats that I make. Mm-hmm. I actually do um like make the beats with me in mind like always trying to make a beat and then like if i hear like a collaboration or something then i'll you know adjust certain things i was gonna ask you about that um i'm gonna ask you about that with the first song we go through because you did a um a collaboration with an artist and when i listened to his verse um this is your new song I heard the punches on the bass drum really, really rolling with his placement of the words. And I, I was going to ask you on, on whether or not you did that because there are some canon songs that I listen to and I'm like, it really, it really forms to his style. I'm like, I wonder if they take into consideration the artist that they're making it for and they must. So are you studying someone's flow when you, are you keeping their, their flow in mind that you've heard before when you make a beat for them or a beat that they're going to be a part of? I think I'm more more aware of it now than I was in the past. Um, in the past, it was just kind of like, you know, I'm just making a song and uh, this is what the song is about. Um, here's the beats. Here's my, I always try to have something ready for the person. Um, I haven't really done it to where like I give them the beat and then they come up with the concept. Like I always have a hook and a verse mm-hmm. and then I let them, uh, bring the verse um i think when i did a collaboration ep with my homie just robert i was like the first time when we kind of let uh other artists lead certain songs um and not really like keeping the artists like in mind because you just never know who if they're gonna say yes or no or um if it's gonna work out if they're gonna even record it so um uh, you know, we just kind of have, tr- I just try to have fun creating, man, and uh, reaching out to people who are willing to work with me. And if they want to work with me, cool. If they don't want to work with me, cool. You know, like, let's keep it rolling. I'll, I'll feature on my own song. <laughs> this is a, this is a, I'm really loving this section, dude, because I'm in a place right now in, in my songwriting where I've, I've realized there's a block that happens for me in creativity and it happens when I'm recording the music or producing the track where I've got this idea for a song and I go in to make it. I'm still using 2004 Cubase LE. Um, I use like producer 10 Fruity Loops and, and it's a free trial. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I can't even do the vocals in that. So I, I do the beat there and then I import that into Cubase. And by the time I don't even finish these songs, I'm, like done i don't even want to think about the song anymore and so i've recently realized that not only am i going to not do the acoustic guitar live much anymore because that's just really a background instrument when you listen to the stuff um i'm going to be uh youtubing um justin bieber type beat um like justin timberlake type beat and so i i have three songs that i wrote lyrics to um that i'm going to be hopefully going to knoxville and recording the vocals to that were blank type beat and I noticed that some of the beats that you are selling and some some of the beats that you've released online um say like 1k few type beats um, Tybrizel type beat and um 
what goes into the that branding like I, these are just like artists you really love and so you're targeting other people that love those artists so um there's some that fit the artist a lot better than um than what the beat is a lot of times um you know i've seen like just tight beats uh you know just all over the place uh so for me it's almost like a way to introduce my audience to other artists to make them mm. curious about who's ty brass who's oh you like what like let me go search this up so then they'll look up and then they'll find that they're actually a dope artist so it's a way to get their um you know get people to search them up but also uh you know it's just i enjoy these artists and uh i've heard of different artists looking up uh like their own type beats and then reaching out to artists and be like hey i want to use this beat or whatever and there's a, a beat that i dropped like a long time ago with a toby wigway type beat uh called drained uh, it's a slower beat that I made like way before I felt confident about my uh, producing and it has like a bunch of like plays on YouTube like it's probably one of my biggest uh, beats on there uh, a part of that is like a remix a Chavo del Ocho remix which is a Mexican uh, TV show for like a comedy show uh, that's very popular and that has like over 26,000 plays on on uh youtube so you know uh part of it is building uh awareness for these artists and then another part of it is uh you know trying to uh also have um like rappers and and other artists know that i'm a christian artist that i listen to these like i relate to these artists um because they might want to support in that way by you know there's so many different um uh reasons for that but uh you know i've just been putting it out there man uh you know people that i've been listening to lately like i'll just make a beat and maybe i'll name it their their type beat if uh if i can't think of somebody straight off the top like you know some of the faster beats i'm like oh yeah 1k view bam you know <laughs> big deal bam you know, but then some of the other ones, like a, a KB type beat, or uh, I think I posted like a Kanye type beat. I'm like, I don't know, like maybe, like sure, like I could see him using it, uh, but that's just me. Sometimes I put my. I love how you're prepared, though. I love how you're prepared. You're very resourceful because um, if you can, if you find that you're just, you can whip up a beat very quickly. Um, and that's just something you're doing, but you're focusing on making a music video for your next song or whatever. Um, I'm really getting to the swing of that right now, like trying to stay engaged with, uh, you know, the podcast and really trying to just, why not? Right. But like the fact that you um, recognize, Hey, I can just whip these things up quickly. Why not make a graphic, you know, uh, produce a beat and put it out there and use it as a, a bridge tool to bridge. Uh, I love when you said that because one of the passions I have is to let people know that there are good Christian rappers. And um, because man, the struggle is real to escape secular rap music, really. And I love talking, I love getting to know you more um, in regards to the beat making because I think as Christians, we have a huge responsibility to have, like John Cooper from Skillet said this in his podcast. He said, as Christians, we need to have the best of everything. We need, need to have the highest quality of everything, the most creative of everything. Because in reality, like you look at bands that are, um, not really in it to glorify God, but they're still reflecting God uh, um, as a creator, right? Um, one of the one of the um, quotes I thought of to include in this um, interview today, it reminded me of you because, so Chris August is a songwriter and he had a song called The Maker and his lyric says, hands of creation on the cross. Hmm. And that, that, really struck a chord with me because I wanted to mention that because as you and I are both creators and to think of the hands that created the entire world pinned up on a cross and dying hmm. like what if as creators like when we enter into a creative mindset or have plans like um, man Lord I really want to have this interview be the best it can be with 1v and I want to get all of these things together 
Holy Spirit was telling me like, are you creating this in a dying way? In like a, in like, uh, you know, bridging, like, cause when Christ died on the cross, he bridged the gap between humanity and God. And like, are you, are you using this creative, are you entering into it in a selfless manner, like dying on the cross? And also are you using it as a bridge to, uh, you know, isn't that, isn't that crazy? So, uh, any, any thoughts on that before we get into, um, a little bit of uh, songwriting? Yeah, um, I think probably like some of the biggest reasons why I dance and uh, make music and stuff is to bridge that gap between people who come from where I come from, you know, listening to uh, like street street music uh, to make it easy, an easier transition for them to ex or hear about God, hear about his goodness, hear about stories um you know or people's lives being changed um so i try to use you know dance try to use dance to uh 1k few songs holy songs to bridge that gap for people who dance people who listen to rap people who uh you know in my area my city you know who might uh, check out my videos and uh hopefully you know spark something in them uh so that's like the main reason why you know, I continue to put out content, yeah, you know, to, uh, you know, praying that to God that he uses it uh, as a tool to reach somebody. And if it doesn't, that's fine, too. But if it does, you know, it, uh, it's, uh, you know, just we're just being obedient. Uh, and God, you know, God's so good. He'll, you know, he'll use the the worst of my beats to, to reach the most people, you know. And that's what I've seen with um, with some of the things on YouTube. You know, some of the ones that I'm like, I'm like, eh, this is all right. You know, like, end up blowing up. And some of the ones that I'm like, oh, this one's better. You know, it got the least amount of views. So <laughs> you just never know, man. You know, just got to be faithful and, and continue to uh, put out the work, you know, knowing that um, it could reach somebody. That's awesome, dude. I, I recently had a um, – an this isn't on the interview, but I was hoping I can kind of just milk you right now. For, <laughs> that's a weird term, but like uh, kind of get a counseling moment from you because um, I do get awfully exhausted. You know, I, I don't think I'm as bad as I used to be as far as like doing it for the views and things or the likes, but like having a mental expectation of, of delivering a certain creative uh, package, whether it's an EP or a CD or a music video, and having to, you know, carry on in the mundane in order to either fund that or just to balance the passions uh, of that God gives us, like family and and work and things like that. Like, how how have you been able to separate yourself from? Because how have you been able to not become discouraged on meeting your personal timelines with releases? Um, and just have been able to um, slow down and still enjoy life and, and still tend to family and friends and things like that. Because like I said earlier, dude, like um, it doesn't seem like you're not ever doing anything marketing wise and releasing things, but um, you, you seem like you have a peace that comes from living a very fulfilled, you know, Christ centered life. And uh, so I guess in a nutshell, my question is, how have you, how can you not get so caught up in the becoming hard on yourself for not meeting personal deadlines and things like that? Um, I think, well, something that uh, helped me uh, was a little bit uh, a while ago, maybe a couple months. Uh, no, it's been, it's been a, a, a good while. I had a conversation with uh, my boxing coach. And he was talking uh, about, um, like... Boxing? Oh, yes. Sir, <laughs> Let me write this interview, bro. <laughs> boxing, man. Watch out. Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, do some boxing on the side. But um, he was talking about, like, having a clear vision of uh, what we want in our lives. You know, obviously, God's going to have the, you know, the final say as to how things go down. But if we can at least have um, an idea of what we 
you know, see our lives being or, um, you know, just kind of have that, you know, vision more, a little more clear than, than, oh, I would like to do this or I would like to do that. Like really writing down like goals and, and priorities. And then uh, once you write them down, like sorting them out. So like kind of like having them go against each other to see which one is most important to you. Um, and what, uh, you know, I right away knew that the first one that I wanted on top was, uh, to be obedient to God, however that may look. Um, so that's the first one. And then, uh, probably like down at the very bottom was to have like a hit song to have, um, to win a boxing match, you know, that was like down at the bottom. And I was telling this to my boxing coach. So, you know, like he he was really encouraging uh, me to try to find what was most important in my life, which is God, family, uh, and, and like, the work that I'm doing. Um, you know, here at Youth Hope, uh, you know, I, I really truly feel like I'm living out my purpose uh, every day, you know, with the work that I'm doing. It can be a little draining with, um, you know, with timelines, with uh, – you know, things that have to be done. Um, but I know what the bigger picture is. And I know that God is being glorified through it all. Um, you know, he's using me as a vessel to get this these things done. And I'm just, you know, trying to be obedient um, with putting in the work. Uh, I try not to, like, worry about things too much. Um you know, just really trusting, giving it up to God, man. Like really just, um, you know, when uh, every day when I wake up in the morning, I pray, I give thanks, uh, thanks to God. And, and I give all my worries. I give all my, I just surrender, man, surrender it all to him because he, you know, he's the almighty creator of everything. So um, I'm, I'm just me. I can only do so much. Uh, so I surrender my, my, you know, my goals, I surrender my, my struggles, my, my, you know, my worries, my family things, um, you know, and he'll take care of it. Um, you know, I'll still do my part. I'll still work out. I'll still work on the music. I'll still go to work. I'll still, um, do the things that need to be done throughout the day. But the bigger things, the things that we ultimately don't have control over, like I just give it all to God and, um, trusting and having faith that uh things will work out for my favor like you know like he says in the bible uh but it's taken a long time for me to to get to this point um i'm just grateful to have uh people around me to encourage me and uh to pray for me that's probably again that's probably helped me a lot more than i know um so you know man just keep good people around you stay in touch reach out and uh and don't beat yourself up. We, we, we can be our greatest critics when it comes to art, when it comes to even the releases. Like, yeah. there, there's all types of right ways and wrong ways to, to release and drop music. Um, you know, like, I'm just trusting God, man. He, you know, I've heard many stories of uh, songs, like, not doing well at the beginning. And then, like, a year later, it gets picked up somehow tiktok you know somebody makes a tiktok and it blows up like and and we had nothing to do with that you know you can spend a thousand dollars on a ad campaign and it reaches a hundred people but then somebody makes a video a funny video a dope video to something and with one of your songs in it and then it takes off and and you spend zero money you know so it you just never know all, all i would encourage you to do is uh you know, really, really write that list of things that you, you know, you would like to accomplish in your life before you die, you know, because you never know when, when that's going to happen. So do that uh, and don't limit yourself. You know, God is uh, limitless. So, you know, he can make anything happen. Uh, it's all up to our uh, our own faith and belief of, of, you know, how he can do great things. But uh, write those down, man. And Keep him, keep him, and in, 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 you know, in front of you as much as possible. Um, write things out, plan, you know, plan as much as you can, and uh, just be faithful in that. And 
um, you were talking about like how, you know, things of God can seem limiting and stuff like that, but um, they can be so freeing when you put in the things that, you know, you would like to accomplish, you know, like working out, uh, reading, praying, all these things. Like there's a schedule that allows me to do these things um, so that down the road, like I'm better off, I'm healthy, I'm, you know, more wise, uh, uh, you know, you know, got more experience down uh, in the long run. And that's more liberating than just chilling, doing whatever, not tracking what I'm doing, like not really knowing where, where I'm going. I don't know if that answers any of uh, what you asked me, but, um, you know, man, just encourage you to keep taking it a day at a time, you know, do something today. And this interview is a great example of that, you know, do something today um, that you would like to accomplish, you know, like, this is awesome, man. Like the, this whole experience talking to you, talking about, you know, deep stuff, man, talking about you know, <coughs> music and dance. Like it's dope. Cool, man. Well, you know, I like how you mentioned the schedule. I, I, I have a, I don't know if you saw this, but I had a, a, a post on my Instagram of like a whiteboard that was faded. Did you notice that? It uh, was, it was so weird because I have this whiteboard. It's, it's been the same whiteboard for the last 12 years. Cause I can't find another one that size. And, uh, I use washable markers and I, you know how like you don't erase them for a long time and, um, huh. it's hard to get off. Well, I use the Mr. Clean erasers, which are like huh. a block, a brick of bleach, right? I get it sopping wet and I'm scrubbing and I had never scrubbed this thing for so long before. And it was a schedule that I had made um of of i do like sunday all the bullet points monday tuesday wednesday all throughout the week and then i'm like the bottom right i'll have uh, a certain appointment here promote for this whatever um and i had a really busy week coming up and i wanted to erase it and make sure i had all my creative things on the schedule well after erasing the whiteboard on every single day you could still see in red letters god's word God's word, God's mm. word, God's word on every one of the days. Mm. And I was frustrated at first, but then I'm like, and I didn't think to myself, this would be an amazing post <laughs> at, at first. At first I was like, Lord, I think you want me to keep that at the forefront of my schedule. I, I think that you don't want me to leave that out. Um, so what I did was I just, all I could do, right, is I planned around my time in God's word because I couldn't erase it off my whiteboard. Right. Um, so the, you know, one of the blessings that I've been able to have in my life is, is my job. I'm a ship shopper. I work at shipped and I, I just designate Thursday morning to Sunday night for looking at my phone and picking up as many orders as I can. And what I like about that is I'm able to stop working when I want to stop working, but I'm able to go and make money when I need money. And there's something that happens a lot when I'm ship shopping and it really bothers me. And this is going to be a good bridge into our next topic. Um, it didn't really bother me. Like it's something that happens in the grocery store. It didn't bother me all, all too much until I started making 10 trips to Meyer and 10 trips to Target in a day. But, you know, I'll be shopping and I'll be in a hurry, just being a numbskull, right? And I'll almost like run into a child. Uh, because I'm in such a hurry. And it'll be clearly my fault most of the time. Um, and the first thing that happens in that situation is the parent will be like, what are you doing? Like, stay over here. Like, get over here, right? And and then they're like, they look up at you, right? And they're like, I'm so sorry about that. And then just cherry on top, like, don't do that again. And it's like, I see that so much that it's starting to break my heart. Not only because I see myself in that kid, um, you know, I, I remember times that, that um, I was treated that way in my past, but also like as a society, as, as, as where we're it, with where our world is right now, are we, are we making way for the youth, for the kids, for the next generation, or are we communicating the message to them that they're in the way? And, you know, that really dawned upon me when I was doing research for our interview I'm like, I got to include that because one of the things I, I most appreciate about you is you are huge with equipping the youth 
uh, making sure they know their identity in Christ, making sure they're listened to, they're heard, they're understood. Here's a big one, making sure they have a safe place, um, not a safe space. And I'm not talking like a home, I'm talking like a place that they can come to, a refuge that they can find, and a safe place to open up and, and filled with trust and non-judgmentalness and all of those things. Um, so as we segue into talking about youth, can you describe to me, um, and, and we're going to be talking about Youth Hope. Can you tell us uh, a little bit more about Youth Hope and what you guys, like I saw you posted some pictures next to it, like, um, what is it right here? Yes, sir. Tell us about That's this day and, and what is Youth Hope? Uh, so that day I was, uh, I think I just finished dropping off students, uh, dropped them off at home after the program. Um, and Youth Hope is a nonprofit, uh, you know, faith, like Christ Christian organization that, uh, provides after school, um, programs for the youth to come, uh, you know, play games, have a meal, uh, you know, have a message, uh, have a small group time where we can have conversations and, you know, just build those relationships with the youth in our community, especially those uh, that come from uh, low income um, households uh, that can't normally, you know, uh, afford to sign up for, you know, softball or football or whatever, because, you know, it costs like a hundred, two hundred dollars for this equipment, food, gas, all all the different expenses that come with that. So, a lot of times those students, you know, are just at home chilling or out in the streets, just walking around, roaming around, uh, doing who knows what. Uh, so that's what Youth Hope is. Is uh, that space that you know it's God's space ultimately to um, have these programs for the youth. And now. Um, now that I'm on board, I'm the creative arts director here at Youth Hope. We are offering creative arts programs in a designated space. I'm actually in it right now. Yeah, I'll show you a little uh, glimpse. Create Studios. Oh. Uh, you know, we are offering dance classes. We're offering uh, baking, cooking, uh, film programs, ceramics. Um, we have... Uh, uh, music and recording, like songwriting uh, program in Rock Island, and uh, just different things that we are offering to the youth uh, to also uh, expand in their creativity, uh, knowing that God is the ultimate creator and that uh, we are co creators with Christ. You know, we are, uh, you know, creating soundtracks, music, arts all the time. Like, I really try to. Uh, let people know that everything is art you know this uh this window this door frame like somebody had to draw up on a uh you know a blueprint and design it and it's design it's art it's functional it's it's creativity so um you know this trash can is art <laughs> you know the by the way the light hits the black bag and it looks white and all the shadows over here look you know like just so many things um that we take for granted sometimes that uh, i try to like help people realize how uh they can be creative they can be artistic without even having to know how to draw you don't have to be a dancer you don't have to be a musician to be an artist you know you can be a carpenter you can do all kinds of different things uh work on cars be a mechanic like to me everything art I like, um, I just saw this verse fleshed out in front of me. Like you just got done talking about uh, as a counseling moment for me, like you get up and you surrender it all to, to the Lord. And, and that's, that's trusting in the Lord. But that verse, it says, he'll give you the desires of your heart if you do that. And when you shared the, you know, the little tour of the, the mirrors and the create studio thing, I got the chills because I'm like, that's it. Like, you know, and the Lord doesn't give us all the desires that we want. Like, you know, he gives us these new desires because he knows that, you know, that desire is going to bring him glory. Um, that's crazy. Like, even the trash can is art. And I like the way you described it with the shadow and the lighting. Now, you know, it's, 
I wanted to say, like, is there – because the trash can, you know, when you're looking at people, too, are you considering people art? Because I feel like sometimes there might be youth out there that, that feel like a trash can, hmm. you know, and people have, like, summed up their worth, whether it be actions or, or words to them, where they don't feel like they're anything more than a trash can. So that's, it's really cool that you can even look at a trash can and call that art. Um, yeah, so there's um, – you, you mentioned earlier how, like, you know, like kids can uh, almost, like, get verbally abused by their parents every now and then when they do something wrong. And eventually what happens is uh, kids – and I know this happened to me when I was younger. Like, we start believing – uh, certain things that get told to us uh, that we get called um, continuously, um, you know, like, you know, the parents calling their, their kids like dumb or stupid or ugly or something like that. Kids start believing those things over time because of the continuous things. Or, uh, you know, I hear a lot about how people call other kids bad, like, oh, this kid is bad, this and that. I'm like, like, and then I try to explain to them, like, well, you know, you're you're trying to reinforce this by, like, say, like agreeing to it by, you know, saying that this kid is bad. Um, you know, to me, like, he's just going through some stuff. He's struggling through some things right now. Um, do you know why he's acting in this way? Like, is there a way we can help change that? You mm -hmm. know, like, I'm always trying to find a solution, trying to find a different way to look at things instead of, accepting what it is uh, like how somebody behaving as like the final thing that they are um, because I know like even me like I didn't always speak English like I had to learn how to speak English I had to learn how to make beats how to dance how to um, talk to people you know like so we we can adapt we can grow we we that's that's the great thing about God is like he can transform us uh, to being like you know, like uh, the worst piece of art. Uh, I, I was talking to the ceramics teacher today because we had a ceramics program. He was talking about how we can be this um, like hard, dried up piece of clay that uh, can't be used for anything. Or we can be um, adjustable and adapt. Like we can be molded into something beautiful, into a piece of art uh, if we allow God to work uh, in our lives and through us. Uh, so, you know, it's all up to, to us, whether we're that hard, you know, piece of clay that is just there, has no shape, you know, it doesn't really look like much, or we can be this beautiful vase with uh, textures and color, and, uh, you know, it can be used for flowers, it can be for water, all kinds of different uses that it can have. Um, so, you know, like, it's really important when, when we see people and when we talk about people or talk to people that we um, are not limiting them by using certain words that, you know, label them. Um, and we as people tend to label things because it makes us feel more comfortable. It makes us feel like more in control, more, um, I don't know. I, I just, my eyes, I had to back up because my eyes were getting red. You can very you can tell I'm about to tear up with this ring light like very easily because when you were saying that I was envisioning the wave music video, mm. and I, I was I don't know the stories of these kids where they come from or, or, or the things that they've experienced. And I'm gonna ask you about that in a second. You don't have to share names, but like I I was watching them dance just mm -hmm. the, just when it would cut to them and they would do their own thing, and I'm like, were they at one point thinking that they weren't worth something like this? So I'm seeing transformation and people's identities restored but um so like, it's crazy too because you know there's that verse that's just like why why would the pot say to the potter why have you made me this way have you ever heard that verse uh i'm not no i don't think it, so. it's it's a verse uh, trust me i'm just kidding do you uh, check check your bible um I'm going to look it up just because if I'm going to do more podcasts, I want people to be able to trust that I'm, um, does the potter, does the pot say to the clay, why did you mold me this way? It's interesting because you use that example. So 
Uh, Romans 9.20, clay doesn't talk back to the fingers that mold it, saying, why did you shape me like this? Isn't it obvious that a potter has a right, perfect right to shape one lump of clay? Hmm. So, like, um, that's not the first, so that's, like, the, the backstory on it. I wonder, where's the ESV? I want ESV. But who are you, oh, man, to answer back to God? Well, what is molded say to its molder? Why have you made me like this? Now, it's crazy because... Originally, people never had these bad thoughts about themselves, right? So something must have happened in, in between where it's like, you know, the, the jar questions who made it only when he, they start hearing these neg negative um, words about themselves, right? Like in the garden, right? They didn't, they, they didn't feel shame. You know, they, they, um, as soon as they bit the fruit, their eyes were opened and they felt shame and, and things. So that, like the lies that were coming into life. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the, like, uh, the, the relationships that you've been able to develop as, as a, what was the name? It was so much better than what I've been saying. It's the Creative Arts Director, right? Yes, sir. Creative Arts Director uh, here at Youth Hope. As you just uh, live, as you live alongside it, as you live life with them, um, what are some of the, how can you describe these relationships? Um, it's definitely, uh, uh, you know, just fruitful, man. Um, seeing some of these kids, um, you know, I've always had a, a big passion for being um, like an older brother, a, a father figure, a positive male role model to uh, these boys and girls um, because a lot of them grow up with uh, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, fathers in their homes who or, or no fathers in their homes. Um, and it's like a, you know, twisted version of what we're supposed to be. Um, and not everybody's like that. You know, there's some kids here who have like wonderful parents, uh, but the ones that do come through the, these doors that don't have that, uh, that maybe just have that, uh, you know, the caring mother who, who's taking care of them and doing their best, uh, but don't have, you know, their, fathers in their lives or don't have older brothers to look up to um you know i try to be that for the kids to let them know what it's like to to be a man um you know what a man is supposed to look like a man is supposed to act especially these days it's more important now than ever um back in the day i used to wear earrings like I have my earrings pierced. I used to wear like all types of jewelry and stuff, um, like wristbands. I still have a watch I wear every now and then. Um, but you know, I kind of saw that there was a need for just purity, um, and that's why I've also never uh, gotten a tattoo. You know, I decided to uh, never get a tattoo in my life. Uh, got rid of the piercings um, to let kids know that it's okay to be, you know, the way you are. You don't have to, uh, even like when I let my hair grow, like I do it on purpose. I let it look rough to let them know that just because you don't look clean and crisp all the time, that it doesn't take away from your value. Um, so I've seen a lot of kids, especially kids that come through the dance classes, the, you know, different art programs, uh, feel a sense of accomplishment, uh, sense, you know, they feel uh, better about themselves because they they are growing, they are uh, creating things that they're proud of instead of things that they're ashamed of. Uh, when I was young, man, like listening to hip hop and rap and all these things shaped my mind to, to think that it was cool to disrespect women, that it was cool to party, that it was cool to do all this. And it made me do things that I was ashamed of, that I, things that I wanted to hide, things that I couldn't tell people. Um, and, you know, that builds up, builds up, builds up, and it makes you feel like you, you can't change, you know. But once you accept God, man, like he transforms you and uh, slowly but surely, you know, like takes care of you like, uh, you know, like a plant that's been growing all places, you know, it, it shapes you and um, it makes you into a beautiful piece of art, man. That's awesome, dude. I, uh, yeah, that's beautiful, man. Cause like, 
you had you had on a lot of topics like we didn't even get there yet but yeah yeah you got it um i i wonder is there a certain is there like a you had mentioned the father not being in the home and, and man we could do a whole live about that that's i've been watching a ton of been watching a ton of uh youtubers talk about that and um you know as where for, for where we're at in a society i mean their their topics are like is this really the biggest issue that um, America is facing right now? Or is it the, the nuclear family? Is it the, the family model, you know, in a society where men aren't really stepping up to the occasion and understanding these things, but at the same time, the government is paying women to stay single more than they could ever make, you know, more than they can, they can ever have with a man in the house. So it's almost easier that way. But like, um, are you seeing any, not even just like repetitive themes, uh, for example, like, household situations may it be like suicidal thoughts or like um uh things that were said are there any repetitive themes or like self views or things that people have been clinging on to as far as identity that 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 you've seen in, in all of your years even before youth hope um yeah um it's been i've seen uh uh I mean, I've kind of always seen it as, uh, you know, that lack of uh, a father figure in uh, kids' lives, um, especially one that they respect, um, you know, one that they look up to uh, as, uh, you know, as, you know, even in my own life, my, my dad was in, in our life. He provided, you know, uh, helped uh, pay the bills and around the house, but he was never like, um present like, present like involved in our lives like that um and i don't blame him you know like you know he went through his own stuff as a child and uh you know there's a lot of different reasons why uh he's the way he is um i still love him i still respect him uh, i learned to forgive him you know because uh we grow up with so much resentment in in our own hearts um from people that let us down um you know, uh, and we don't understand sometimes why why they're that way. But uh, you know, when you forgive those people, it it, it frees you and it liberates you uh, to be you, to be who you're supposed to be. But um, you know that that's the same theme that I've seen a lot. Is uh, a lot of uh, kids are resentful um, to a certain parent or uh, somebody relative. Um, I've seen a lot of. Uh, uh, divorce um, in the different just in, all over the country uh, people aren't too uh, excited about marriage and a lot of it has been because uh, I even had a conversation with my mom the other day about how like uh, people used to get married at a young age without thinking or really learning to uh, know what love is know what um, true love is know where it comes from uh and know what the purpose of marriage is mm -hmm. uh, so that's why a lot of like our parents or people's you know grandparents um they end up divorcing or you know being in a marriage that's not so loving um yeah, that's why we've seen a lot of that so now we're seeing a lot of the effects of it um you know with kids being confused about their uh, gender and about their emotions and feelings. Uh, there's a lot of confusion going on, but you know, do you think, I. Do you think that comes from not seeing a uh, the proper role of a of a mom and a dad being fulfilled in, in those sort of gender roles in the household um, that yeah. might that might trickle down into that? Um, I believe so. You know, like uh, I think it's you know, with me not having my father um as involved in my life like you know i've i've had thoughts and ideas and things come through my own mind i'm like you know questioning things i remember uh, when i was young questioning things like whoa is this right is this wrong is this popular like is this because you know what is happening um so, you know, like I could really see that being a thing. And uh, I've also seen like families with 
um, you know, with their parents, uh, both parents being involved in a strong marriage, uh, you know, uh, kids also struggle, but what happens is they come back to a place of, um, you know, uh, with being better off uh, because they had that foundation. You know, we make our own decisions once we're adults. Uh, they can be right or wrong, and they can be influenced by, you know, our friends or our environment or whatever. Uh, but what is instilled in us as uh, young kids, the things that we are allowed to see and experience really do shape our minds and mold our adult experience as we grow up, you know? I've asked you about this before, um, and I think it, we're going to go off paper just a little bit, but uh, I do want to um, ask you about your marriage because, I mean, you're, you're definitely living out, um, you're, you're, you're living hope. Um, I mean, not to quote that song or anything, but like you're living hope because um, no wonder you're seeing a lot of that uh, lack of male um, father figures in people's lives, because isn't the marriage, isn't marriage supposed to reflect the gospel and isn't, yeah. isn't, isn't the, you know, and for me, I've talked about this before. And I think this was one of my first things with you is like, Hey, like I didn't have a dad growing up. So when there, there was a positive male figure in my life, it took me over a year to really tear down all my misconceptions about what he was trying to do with me. Like, am I your project? But, um, when, when your father's not present and you start hearing terms like heavenly father, I mean, it's, it's really easy to like mash the two definitions. It's like, Oh, is my dad far away? Does my dad not want anything to do with me? Is he this and that, that, um, do you want to shed light into kind of like um, what what it's meant to have a heavenly father in your life? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, like growing up with my family and my dad not being in the picture as much. And also like uh, my grandparents, like uh, they weren't, you know, the best examples of, um, you know, uh, the best father they did their best they did what they could um you know they didn't have the same education we have now uh there wasn't a lot of people uh sharing the gospel with them when they were young but due to me even you know like you know learning about the church culture like it started with my mom my mom was the one that kind of made that transition and uh started you know talking to us about god uh, all the different lessons and stories. So um, once I realized, you know, that God is our heavenly father and he's our good father um, who doesn't, you know, doesn't let us down, we might not always understand why he does things. And I've seen this, uh, you know, seeing parents interact with their own kids, you know, kids want to stay up all night and eat candy all day, every day. But then their parents are like, no, you can't do that. Like, it's not good for you. And the kid gets upset and they cry and they like, well, why do you hate me? Like, I hate you, like type of things. And, you know, I'm, I grew to see that that's like a, an example of how we can be with God sometimes. And our Heavenly Father is like, when we don't get what we think is good for us, we get upset and we cry and we, uh, you know, we say hurtful things um, that we, you know, that we don't understand why, but, you know, like God always has that, uh, you know, the best intentions for our lives. He has the best um, things, you know, for us, planned for us, but we can be so impatient. We can be, uh, you know, trying to do it our own way, try to, you know, do things that discourage us in the long run, that hurt us in the long run. Um, you know, so that's what I've learned is living God's way and, and, and he has like the best plan for our lives is, you know, definitely being obedient to him. And, uh, and you'll see things going out, you know, with my own marriage, you know, it's not the perfect marriage. It's not, um, you know, like, I, I don't even know what, but, you know, like, we, we have our own struggles. There's times when we dis, uh, disagree, we, you know, but the biggest part of it has been communication and, and talking 
things through. They're not, it's not comfortable sometimes. We, we have things that um, even we battle with personally that, um, that can come in between us. Uh, so it's really trying to be open about what, um, you know, what we're going through. And, um, and that's the same with our relationship with God, you know, being open, being willing to accept that we're wrong sometimes, you know, we're not always right. We make mistakes. We, you know, we, uh, we're a work in progress, but knowing that the goal is to, um, ultimately be at peace, to have a joyful, um, experience and to focus on the good things too, because we can focus so much on the negativity and the, the bad things, um, that happened or, you know, could have happened, uh, take away our peace. So, uh, man, you know, just learn so much about being a man, respecting women, um, you know, communication. Uh, I'm still learning about communication. I don't consider myself, um, you know, the best communicator, uh, but it's something that I definitely want to grow in and I'm working on it. Um, reading books, studying, watching people like, um, you know, it's a work in progress, man. But uh, I, uh, I'm glad that I'm glad you shared all that. Cause like I, that, that's the story of my ear. I am, I was the kid that had the popsicle taken away. And, um, but when I, when I reached, when I reached the popsicle, I knew it wasn't the best thing. Mm. Um, no, no, let's, let's add to the analogy. So I basically, um, I was pursuing marriage with, with a young lady and, and I, I failed. Um, I, they kind of fell apart because of me. And um, I was so heartbroken that um, I, I reached for a, you know, a popsicle. I, I, I'm like, man, I gotta. So basically I went down a path and uh, that I knew I should have gone down and, and, God snatched it from me and I was so angry, dude. I'd never told so many people that I was peed off at God before. I was kind of, I, I'm embarrassed talking about it now because I'm on the other side of things, but people would come up and ask to ask me to pray for them. And, and I would be like, man, God's not going to listen to me right now. Or like, I don't, I don't want to. And um, what's crazy is like, this has been like when I was courting this young lady, like the biggest focal point of our prayer was like, we are children of God. Um, I, I've been a Christian for um, since 2009, but this year, 2021 has been the first year where I've really been focusing and kind of leaning into what it's like to be a son of God. And it's crazy because I, I all of these stories, like the prodigal son and things like that really mm -hmm. jump out even more so when when, when I'm praying those things out loud, like it's not just what people say about us that we begin to believe, it's things that we say about ourselves that can manifest into reality. Um, and so whether it's like constantly saying, hey, I have this, I'm ADD or I have this and that, we can really lean into that identity. And so constantly praying with this young lady, um, thanking him, uh, you know, she'd be like, Lord, thank you for your son, David, and like just the man he's, you're making him into. Um, I really came out of that knowing that he was my dad. And so when I, when he snatched that from me, I'm like, all right, you're the only person who could have stopped this. And you're, you're the only person who allowed it to happen. So I believe in God, which means I believe I, who is responsible. I'm really angry. And so I caved in under the fatherly love. It's really strange how it happened because he was presenting these things to me like, that were deep to my, my son of God heart, like things that I'm passionate about. And he just kept tackling me with it. Like, you know, I remember this girl comes up to me and she's like, Oh my gosh, like, I'm so glad I saw you. Like I, I was thinking about like killing myself yesterday and Oh my gosh, the bus driver like says like, you're, you're, you're such a light. And these are people that I've, I've talked to and, and have, have invested in like, like you have with youth. But I, I had an episode and it was like, I am no longer that guy. I, I don't want to be here for them right now, God. And, but that happened and I kept in touch with that person. And then someone's cat died and God's like, do you remember when I was with you when your cat was passing away? Like, um, you know, you know, you want to pray for her. Come on, you know, you want to pray. And then like a friend from the senior center comes up to me the same day. And he's like, I only have a year left to live. And God's like, you know, you want to get his phone number, you know, you want to spend time with him. And one thing after the other, it's like, 
God, do you, do you really think that I'm the person for this right now, especially after how angry I was at you? But he looks at me and he sees his anger. Pressure and fatherly love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, so I love what you said about um, him being the heavenly father. And uh, I, I went off on a tangent, but I think I was trying to hit on some points that you had said, but like the popsicle thing or, or like seeing a kid, it's crazy. We started off by talking about the kid that's getting scolded uh, for yeah. something wrong, but like now it's like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm always going to remember that moment now that I felt like, you know what? I was allowed to feel angry at God. I, I regret it, but he didn't judge me. He allowed me to feel that way until I just got through it. And so, you know what? Like, I felt like, I felt like I was being held. Now on this side of the side of things, I feel like I was being held. And, and while I was in his arms the whole time, I was crying and screaming and throwing things. But when it was all said and done, I was still in his arms. And I had, I'd never had that in real life before. Um, so that you know when we are crying and screaming and you know did did something that messed up like he doesn't call us bad names he doesn't you know uh condemn us he you know he's willing to forgive us um you know as long as we seek that forgiveness and, and repentance you know uh, willingness to turn away from our from our ways and and do it his way you know uh, you know he loves us so that's Amen. uh Part. Amen. All right. So, um, you know, next on this list, I wanted you to get into your testimony. You've already shared quite a bit about um, in the beginning about, you know, when you turned to Christ and things. Um, well, I mean, was it an easy decision for you? Um, or was well, it kind of, uh, was it, did you kind of cave in under like his, his pursuit? Did you feel like he was pursuing you and you finally just caved in or like what? It was... It was weird because, like, I grew up uh, uh, in the Catholic Church, so uh, it it was uh, like a different understanding of of what it meant to follow Christ and and Jesus and how to pray and how to uh, live life properly. So it, I struggled a lot internally about um, you know what faith. Um, um, I even, uh, you know, started researching, uh, like, things on YouTube, things would come up, um, you know, even saw about, like, uh, symbolism and dark things on uh, YouTube about, you know, talking about just different aspects of spirituality. Um, uh, so it was, uh, it was a very confusing time. When I was, um, you know, young, after high school, uh, my mom ended up moving back to Mexico. So I was just dead and my dad was, was working all the time. So it was just hard to have, um, you know, real conversations about things with him. And my sisters were still around. So I felt a lot of weight on me, um, you know, having to be a brother my sisters but also kind of like a father figure to them since my dad was around but they didn't really have those conversations with them um you know those hard conversations about their grades about their why they couldn't have a phone or, you know just different things like that um so you know i was just battling trying to figure out uh, how to be that man that god wanted me to be but also you know also i was still young so i didn't know like you know, I didn't, I was just confused about my role in life. Um, and I was seeking answers. I was looking, you know, looking up videos on YouTube, which, you know, uh, these days I heard a lot the word uh, mentor. So if you can find somebody to, that can pour into you, that can be like a father figure, um, it could be your father. But uh, if it's like, uh, you know, somebody that you respect, that you look up to, uh, that can guide you and give you advice. Um, you know, that's always a great thing. I didn't have a mentor back in the day. Uh, I didn't have somebody that I felt comfortable enough to go open up to and go and talk to them about things. So I was just researching things on my own and I stumbled upon some pretty dark things. 
Um, and it was just in my lowest point probably when I was just like really, I was just depressed. I started like thinking very dark thoughts. Um, and, you know, part of it was my shame. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, for a while there, I had uh, just rebelled and started partying, started drinking, smoking, uh, really like trying to fit in with the, you know, the, the kids that were out and about for, uh, you know, just doing who knows what. Uh, thankfully, I didn't get too deep into it. God really did, uh, you know, almost like pull me back before I... I What's know, the lyric I'm thinking of, dude, where you're on the porch? I used it for the promo. You said, like, I was in, I was into the dark, but he lit me up. You know what I'm talking about? That video, the collaboration you did with uh, all of those artists, uh, Krugs. And you're on the porch and you're saying something like, uh, I was... I was in the dark and he lit me up or like your thoughts were dark or something. That's what I'm thinking of when you're sharing this. Um, it was just before you said, um, give me some new kicks. That's why my walk is different. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, I'm terrible at memorizing my own lyrics too. You've got a ton of songs though, bro. Like I, I didn't count, but I wanted to before this because, uh, um, but I see what you're saying, dude. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there without a mentor. Like we can, we can really look to YouTube as a mentor and, and we can, um, you know, we see a lot of that with, you know, people that are like researching revelation and stuff. Like, where are we getting our information? Like, what are we going to consider? Where, where are we going to put our faith in? We're all looking for hope. We're all looking for a place to lean into. And um, has your marriage been something like that too? Like uh, I'm, I've got this theory and I feel like whenever I'm talking with someone who's married, like uh, a lot, a lot of my friends are married. I'm not just benefiting from, uh, you know, you as a person, you know, if we're vessels and if you're in a marriage where you're constantly being poured into one another, like I'm benefiting from your wife right now. Like, like, like whether it's like the love you guys give and take every day or the, um, you know, the mannerisms and things like that, that, that catch on with communication. Like I, um, Oh yeah. Yeah. Are you guys, uh, does your wife also, join you in the the youth of hope and all of these things um so my wife like counsel you behind the scenes are you able to come to her with some of the like man like this this kid just told me this like can you pray with me about this like is that oh, something she's passionate about too like definitely um you know i've been uh you know my relationship with uh christ was kind of like the thing that got us in that path um, it was like my decision to follow Christ that um, um, kind of has been keeping us in the in that realm. Um, she has definitely, you know, ex uh, embraced it and accepted and had an open mind about it. Uh, she's grown so much, man, since uh, we started dating when we were in middle school. Um, so I've known her for a long time, um, and I've just seen her you know, just her spiritual, her mental, her uh, just so much growth in um, in her. And I've grown a lot because of her as well. Uh, she challenges me uh, in different ways. And, um, uh, and she, you know, she makes me stronger for sure. She has a, like a, a strong personality. Like she's a fighter for sure. Um, and she just has this fire and this passion that I uh, truly admire. And I'm always like, you know, like, like, man, like, you're, like, you're, you're, you're cool. I see you like, you know, and, and she admires my, my peacefulness, my calmness, my, uh, my gratefulness, my reflectiveness. Um, you know, so we definitely bounce off each other. We have conversations. We have prayer. What do you mean by reflectiveness? Like the willingness to take a step back and think about things in a different way, like really take things in and into consideration. Uh, you know, we, we have situations uh, that might come up and, uh, you know, she might get upset about it and I'd be like, well, you know, like could be worse or we could be doing something different and, you know, like really try to bring it back uh, to, you know, trying to think positive man like i'm very optimistic as well and uh that's just with me like seeing my life seeing her life uh the fact that we're alive like uh, 
you know, you think about, um, you know, how humans are born. Like, there's, like, one in a billion or however many, like, whatever the odds are for you to be born today is, you know, all the odds are against you, but we're here today, you know, and just being grateful for that simple fact uh, that we are able to live another day, you yeah. know. You know, so um, always taking it back. You know, I'm always like super, like deep with my thoughts, and she can sometimes be like, like, like just <laughs> like that's too much, man. Uh, no, but I... but she appreciates it. Um, you know, she it's definitely made her a more uh, you know um, calm person, more. Uh, just more chill, not so quick to anger, not so uh, mm. quick to want to fight. Because <laughs> mm. um, that's you know she grew up with five older brother, uh, yeah, five older brothers. So she's the the young, the little sister. So uh, you know, and I had to be brave to you know be uh, be part of her family because all her other older brothers, you know, they're older. So. Um, they, they, that's their little sister, so they're going to protect her a lot. So, um, you know, just respect, man, learning respect from one another and respecting uh, the way she is, the way I am. Um, you know, learning that we both have, we contribute to, to our, our marriage, uh, different things, and it, it just makes us better, man. You know, I try not to want to change the way she is because I admire the way she is, and you know, she does the same for me. That's cool. Um, but that's cool. Um, yeah. So before we get into the, we're gonna listen to some of your music. I, get into that. Like I, uh, I think uh, it's no wonder that you're you've got a passion for youth because you know I've, you've you've shared a little of your story and um, would you say it's accurate that you want to be that that thing that you may not have had growing up and you want to be present where other people weren't present. Um, but ultimately you want to point them to Jesus, right? You, you want to point them to their heavenly father. Um, yeah, man. You're right on it, man. That's, that's and, and if you guys, if you guys are like just joining us, like it's, it's in the lyrics really like check it out. Right. You've got chosen. Wait, wait, chosen um, right here. That's my very first thing. I was chosen to bring positivity to the kids. Right, positivity to the kids. You've got here uh, in the queue, he says, I try to be an example for kids. I try to be an example for kids. You've got, um, uh, we had one more. Um, uh, Q, chosen, um, yeah, was it Aqua? It was Aqua. You say it in there too. I think. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for the kids, and that's a fact. See, like it's it's in it's it's evident. And so, like, if you guys are just joining us, like, uh, one one V is a a, a dance choreog choreographer, a creative arts director at a at a brand new nonprofit. Um, he's a producer. He makes beats. He sells them. He makes his own beats. Writes his own songs to those beats. Um, includes the youth in on this. I mean, you've had, uh, we got Joe Capel Kent watching. Uh, Joe produced Tipsy. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I love that you invite, we didn't get to talk about that a lot, but you have your students in your music videos and you have your students on your tracks. I mean, what's, I mean, what's that like? Like having some of your students um, in your music videos and in your songs? before we move on to listening to some of these songs? Um, and it's just, you know, it's just always dope to uh, see the kids um, express themselves creatively. Um, and, you know, I try to definitely give them an opportunity to be part of what I'm doing because it's, like I said, it's ultimately not about me, man. Like, I'm, I'm going to pass on and people will forgive me. But um, something that I always hear about is, like, it's not about uh, – people won't remember what you said, but they'll remember how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. And that always, like, that has a big impact in my life because, you know, I remember how people made me feel or, you know, things like that. So 
if I can uh, provide an opportunity for them to be themselves uh, in a positive way, in a positive environment that uh, will encourage them and, and, and make them feel proud about themselves uh, down the road, be like, hey, I was in the music video. Uh, <laughs> like, that's dope. Like, I, I remember when I was young, I was a kid, I wanted to be in music videos. The music videos I used to watch back in the day were definitely not appropriate. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the fact that they can say that they were in the music video, they can go home and show their friends or show their grandma or, you know, somebody, uh, you know, show them the dance that they learned. Like, it, it, it creates that sense of pride, that uh, that accomplishment. They feel better about themselves because they, they're doing something uh, cool and also something that's good. Something that's, yeah, good. Um your lyrics are very, very wholesome. They're very, uh, like, someone said, um, I was listening to an interview I did with Messenger, and he said, like, you know, the word of God is, is like, um, pregnant, and, like, every time you go to it, it's going to produce something. It's going to birth something new in your life. And so that he, he puts a lot of that content in his songs, and I think the same is true with you. Like, I, I don't think I would stumble upon any, like, duration of a song and not hear um anything about hope so we're gonna get into the first song i want to review is a brand new song this is a collaboration you did with miles minnick this one's called the cue and what really stuck out about the cue for me was the theatrics and i use the word theatrics because it's all of it even the graphic design now did you design the cover did you design the cover um, for I, uh, this I, no, I had a friend work on that, but I gave him the, the concept and the idea for what I wanted for it. Yeah, so the idea is really what I want to tap into. Um, this is the cue. And if you look, I don't know, like, so all my peeps here, this looks like a police cruiser from just down the road. This is what <laughs> they look like. Here. And I don't know how many people can say that. I mean, they only have so many models, but that looks like a Muskegon police car uh, SUV. Um, Explain the imagery. What I liked is that the font is like a movie poster, uh -huh. even down to like starring one V on the track uh, and featuring Miles Minnick. Uh, but like in the quotations, the, the cue, like it just, it gives me the movie vibes. Yeah, that was definitely the, the concept, the idea. I wanted it to look like a movie po poster. Um you know, uh, as far as the cop car and even the futuristic uh, looking car there with the building and smoke and fire in the background, like that was more of uh, the graphic uh, designers, um, you know, creativity. Um, I just kind of gave them the concept, hey, I want it to look like a movie poster, uh, you know, some action. I sent them the song, I believe, to so he could hear it. And, um, you know, it turned out pretty dope. Um, it's dope. It's so good. And uh, so, all right, we're just going to play it, and then I'm going to kind of echo some of the, the terminology that I'm hearing in the song, because there's a lot of terminology that, like, reminds you of uh, – I mean, you're getting your point across, but you're, you're using terms uh, that are, like, making movies and that sort of thing. So here is uh, – ladies and gentlemen, for your listening pleasure, 1V on the track with The Q. <laughs> When I pull up, I got a crew. We bring flavor, we bring the smooth. We in the studio, working the moves. My life I'm moving, and I got the cue. When I pull up, I got a crew. We bring flavor, we bring the smooth. We in the studio, working the moves. My life I'm moving, and I got the cue. When I pull up, I got a crew. We bring flavor, we bring the smooth. We in the studio, working the moves. My life I'm moving. I got the cue, that means I'm ready for action, I know what to do. I am not acting, I do this for real, come walk in my shoes. I got the juice, I got the piece like a deuce. I don't be watching the news, they just be shaping your views, getting people confused. I'm not a muse. Uh. Gotta go around town, gotta do it like this. This for the winner, but they couldn't buy this. They try to copy, but they couldn't buy this. This not original, making original. I be making music for the people that's original. Making it digital, bringing the visual. Gotta take off the blinds, so it's visible. I'm not just talking, I really do this. I try to be an example for kids. Walking so much that I'm tearing my kicks. Uh, uh, you 
can't ignore me to the truth. I be adjusting my heart on you. I'ma keep pushing right here in the queue. I got the queue when I pull up. All right, so there's a lot of just that. That's freaking fire, dude. Props Thank on that you. song, dude. Uh, the first lyric that stuck out to me was obviously like, uh, I do this for real, you know? And I didn't just think of that, like, because um, uh, you're above reproach. Um, I consider you a friend of mine that's really living it out. Um, but that's Denzel Washington's uh, approach to making films. Did you know that? Like, he, uh, he doesn't pick, he doesn't change who he is for a movie script. He picks mm. movie scripts that surrounds who he is as a person. And that, that's why you get what you get when you watch a Denzel movie. Um, and so that stuck out to me um, as one of the lyrics. But also, um, hang on, I wrote, wrote this stuff down. Uh, ready for action. Uh, bring in the visual. God is the one that directs. Let a new story begin. Miles Minnick me mentions Blockbuster. Yes, sir. Uh, my Life a Movie and I Got the Cue. Imagery of Making a Movie. So elaborate on this. Like, how did you stumble across this idea? And, and tell us a little bit about the making of this song. Uh, so when I was working on this concept, um, I think I just started working on uh, like the hook. I always like working with the hook. Um, and I always like talking about like pulling up with the crew because, uh, you know, I always got my uh, dance students or, uh, you know, I always try to have people with me. Sometimes I pull up by myself, but, you know, there's people there that know me and <laughs> I think there's that's rare though. I usually at least have one more person with me. Uh, which it's you, like the disciples, right? Jesus sent them on in twos. Yeah, you know. So um, that's the first line. When I pull up, I got a crew. We bring in flavor. We bring stew. We in the studio working on moves because we're always in the dance studio. Uh, my life for movie, and I got the cue. Like when I say uh, I'm gonna turn these lights off, so I might get a little dark. Uh, okay. So. When I say uh, my life for movie and I got the cue, there was uh, something that came up in my life. And I think I was either watching a video or I heard somebody say that we are, uh, you know, the stars of our own movie. Like we are uh, the main actors of our own movie, uh, our own book. So how would we like our character to be portrayed or be lived out? Um, and that kind of got the ball rolling with uh, some of the different uh, movie references. Uh, I've taken some acting classes in the past, uh, and a lot of it can be, you know, like you taking on, uh, you know, the character of whoever you, you're trying to portray. Um, method acting? So, uh, method acting, I'm not really too sure about the, the terminology on that one, like what the different type of acting <laughs> Uh, is but I just know that uh, it was something that you know that you you gotta be somebody else. Um, so when I say I'm not acting, I do this for real. Um, you know, like you really gotta, you know, just be real about uh, your life, and especially if uh, people are watching what you're doing, like uh, it's gonna be way more powerful in that way. Um, and being yourself, I also kind of reference about being yourself. He said uh, something about trying to try. Uh, they try to copy, but they couldn't bite this. Yeah, like, when you went and twisted in there, yeah. Yeah, when you're trying to, um, you know, like take something uh, that's yours, that's something that's not yours, and trying to make it yours, uh, like plagiarism type thing. Um, you know, like people are always gonna be drawn to your authenticity to the real thing, you know, so um, realness and, you know, like all of it oh, kind of seeps through this song, um, knowing too that God is, God is the one that directs, you know, yeah. he keeps guiding my steps. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, that's a big part of it too. Like knowing that, you know, I'm here, you see me right now, but it comes from God. Like that's, he's the source, yeah. you know, he's the main 
the main person that makes making this happen. Now tell me how'd you get Miles on this track? Cause like, first of all, I never heard of him before until he started like uh, doing things with Reach, and and he killed it, dude. He talks about like spreading the word like mustard, you know? Yes, like, sir. How do you just like? How do you just go and like describe preaching the gospel as making a sandwich and and keep it swag? You know? I guess I said swag. She wants a gentleman. Okay, that's what it means. <laughs> But like, how does he go and just like, <laughs> spread the word like mustard? And and this is the song. This is the one. Can I play a little bit of his verse? Yeah, go for it. And and when I was listening to this verse, I was like, all right, there's no way the music's exactly the same as it was on your verse. So did you alter this so that it would fit his rhyme a little bit better? Because it's punching with the bass drum, dude. Uh, it's really man, punching. He's that dope, man. He just that dope. He made he made it work. Did he? That was fun. Every dude that that was lit. And enemies they try to bother. We bring you flavor. We bring the food. We in the studio. Working the moves. My life's a movie. And I got the cue. When I pull out, I got a crew. We bring you flavor. We bring the food. I like how you just uh you you double time the chorus too. Yeah. It's gonna be great for engaging. On stage. That's fire, dude. So uh, tell us a little bit about working with him and, and uh, how did you, what made you want to reach out to him? Uh, you know, man, like I've been, I've been following, I've been actually been listening to his music for a while, like even before he started popping off, like for real, for real, like uh like a long time ago he he was uh making music with another guy uh miles and like they had a crew it was him and this other guy and they were making different music uh and i just uh, he they had like a dope sound like a west coast sound like something that, that really stood out to me so i've known miles like about miles for a while so um you know something that i've been able to realize too is like if you never ask or you never put yourself out there like nothing's ever gonna happen like or it might happen but it's gonna be way later or or might not ever happen so uh mm -hmm. i've been able to collaborate with uh with different artists because of my willingness to reach out to ask to put myself out there to um you know, send people beats, send people ideas, send people concepts. And, um, you know, he was willing to work with me, man. And uh, we made that happen. I just sent him the the, the beat. I actually sent him a couple of different things. Uh, and that was the one that he really rocked with. Um, we made it happen and we got a dope song. It took a while for, uh, for me to release this. Um, I really wanted to release it, I think, about last year. But it wasn't ready. And then, mm. uh, uh, you know, re wanted to release it this year for my birthday. Uh, so, you know, uh, time, everything happens in the right time. Uh, I feel like got more music, better sound now, better quality. Uh, I've been reaching out to different engineers and producers, uh, mainly engineers in my area to help me get a, a better and more crisp sound uh, than what I've been able to achieve in the past. Um, so, you know, just growing, man, taking taking the time to invest into things. So I got a lot of people, you know, rooting for me, people believing in me, uh, you know, willing to help me out, um, you know, for the low or even for free sometimes, just gifting me stuff. Uh, always definitely willing to, you know, invest in myself. But, you know, people people want to see, see uh, you know, uh, see me grow and see 
they believe in the mission. So, um, nice. So this is the first song, huh? I said, it's just happening. And it's inspiring to see, dude, like that, that gives me permission to be like, to release stuff late. And like, I always am hard on myself until I, like, I realize that, uh, how it's working for a lot of different people like you and, and all the other artists I met on the extremes who were like, um, I felt like I was alone in that. Like I had all of this back music that I hadn't released yet, but like, I love how God can renew something and, and give us new meaning to things. And like, uh, you end up realizing that, you know, his timing was better. This next song we're going to go through is called enemies. And I think it was the first song that really sticks out when I think of you because I don't know. I was front row for it on the extreme tour, but also, uh, it, one of the, it might have been the first one you played uh, from your setup, from your speakers in so. Davenport. So here is uh, Enemies right here. Okay, so I, I'm going to play it from the beginning of the first chorus, because that's going to set up for a good cover. Time for me to realize what I'm doing. Hesitation hug me back, it will stop me from growing. Insecurity would make me just want to quit. I want it to be in it. I really worry about them. I got enemies, enemies. I ain't really worried about them. They not touching me. Only one I worry about is when you hear me. That's my enemy. Enemies, enemies. I got enemies, enemies. I ain't really worried about a thing that touching me. Only one I worry about is the enemy. That's my enemy. I'm my biggest enemy in this life, and I know it. Took a little time for me to realize what I'm doing. Hesitation held me back, it will stop me from growing. Insecurity would make me just wanna quit. I want it to fit in. I just wanna be accepted right from the beginning. I don't wanna have to prove myself I'm done with sinning. And that's why I'm saying it. Now we're gonna win it. Yeah, so that's enemies. That's a bang banger. Yes, sir. Banger. <laughs> so, uh, I man, I don't know what happened to the the cue. I had it like at the perfect time because I was gonna play it into the first chorus. Um, there's something that changes that I really, I'm reading. I think a little too deep into, but um, I love that you wait for the chorus the second time around. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't hear that verse because uh, going into the is it going to the first cor chorus you say. Uh, the Lord, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So that sets you up for the first chorus, right? And that's a scripture. So it's always good, like, going into a first chorus with a scripture. But um, I don't know, like, to, uh, wh what was, uh, can you shed light on some of the lyrics in the in the verse there? Because there was a lot of self-reflection and, and a lot of uh, um, honesty in there about being hard on yourself that that's one of the biggest things that sticks out to me mm -hmm. um the inner me being the enemy i love the the rhyme there yeah so um i think when i was when i was first thinking about this song uh definitely had that scripture in mind um but then i was also thinking about how uh we can you know we can be the our greatest enemies um when we have like negative self-talk, uh, when we have uh, just a, a negative image of ourselves, um, you know, uh, insecurities, uh, hesitation to, to go through with things um, because of our own self-doubt, you know. Um, and 
that can be the thing that holds us back from receiving our our biggest blessings in life. Um, you know, <laughs> it's okay to to want to have things that uh, that are you know great and amazing and stuff. Uh, but I think we can, especially as artists, we can be overly analytical and over uh, like we can be our greatest uh, you know our worst critics. So you know, I think that's um, that's what the the uh, main theme about this song was is that you know like we are our greatest enemies. Um, you know, the people can talk about us, people can say all these things. Um, you know, like the devil can try to do all kinds of things to to get us to slip and fall, but at, at the end of the day, we have that choice to let it you know affect us. Um, and yeah. Yeah. you know. We surround ourselves with God and 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 with His Word and His uh, uh, you know picture of who we are. You know we're made in His image. Like you know we start to you know uh, know that all this other stuff you know isn't real and uh, you know what's real is our connection with Him, our relationship with Him. And I like that you included that. So this song right here, like live, it's relatable. It's engaging because when someone sings that song out, it's like, you know what? We're, me, me and 1V, like, we understand each other. We both have enemies, right? right. So if you were to stop there, right, it wouldn't be as as helpful of a song, would it? So you include, um, you get into God, though, in that song. You you don't just talk about, like, relating with them, saying, hey, we, we all have enemies, um, but you also introduce them to to the friend right right also um you know i talk about um you know um yeah so at the beginning talk about how we all got enemies but also knowing that we're our greatest enemy um and because we can be so quick to point at everybody else but we sometimes are hesitant about like okay well what am i doing like what am I doing that's not helping me grow? That's not uh, progressing me. So it's just really like analyzing ourselves, but then also knowing that, um, you know, like God is ultimately the way. Jesus is uh, the answer to a lot of our pain, a lot of our self doubt, a lot of our, um, you know, insecurity. So, um, you know, I go into, uh, you know, a lot of honesty. And, uh, you know, this uh, song was actually one that. I uh, enjoy a lot because I was able to be more vulnerable in it, um, talk about some of those things that I've battled with in the past, and um, and then also, you know, be able to offer that uh, hope and, and, and let them know that, you know, that there's uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so, you know, I've had uh, kids uh, singing that song now too. Uh, you know, they'd be coming up to me and they always asking me to play that song. Cause they really enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's they're catchy. Learning, yeah, yeah. the lyrics, man, and uh, you know, it's it's really dope to see God using it. They might not understand the 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 aspects or the impact that it can that it's making in their lives right now. But you know, as they they grow and they learn to question things, uh, you know, I pray that it it helps them. That's awesome, man. You're like you're like one of the crayons God's using to to call. I just called you a crayon, bro. Hey, like, we all what's that stupid what did i hear before like we're all we're just a couple of crayons in the same box my friend i don't know um <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> so um i want to i want to back up to the second going into the the chorus there i remember watching you do this live and i was like the only one that failed in the moment which was like i was like sl i was like dancing and going all crazy and i, I was like thinking the course was going to happen and then it didn't and then all everyone around me was like they knew they knew where you were waiting and i want to play that part again before i i talk about why um that part sticks out to me mm -hmm. um where, where is it uh and the second chorus and the third chorus and the third chorus yeah and the third chorus but like Hard to be tough, enemy. All you so ain't really worry about it. I got enemy. I know he got the biggest enemy. I ain't with the fake. Used to be under attack. Now I know my fate. I got faith in the Lord. I know he got the key. He can hear me. 
So it's, you know, normally a song would just go one, two, three, four, and it would just go straight into the chorus because, you know, producers copy and paste, right? Get it done. This right here is, is very symbolic for me. The table in front of my enemies. I got, I got enemies. Okay, so when, when I hear the mmm, I'm, I'm imagining like, like, cause aren't we waiting for opposition? Aren't we waiting just to, there's going to be enemies. The Bible teaches it like, but fear not because Christ has overcome the world. Like we're supposed to expect opposition. No one fights, like jumps into a battlefield and says, well, why are they shooting at me? Right? Like we're supposed to expect it. So I expect the course to come there. Right. I expect it to come, but like just that, that pause to just reflect and be like, you know what? Like, you know, it's coming, you know, the hate's coming too. Right? Like, so I, I read into that and I'm like, not only is it like, um, allowing you to just feel it and the anticipation of the chorus is almost like symbolic to me of like man like just as i expect the chorus to show up like i also expect to have some enemies but just the way he was like mm, kind of reminded me of like mm -hmm, they're coming mm. yep. <laughs> <laughs> so like that that was like um i don't know that it got me thinking yeah, no, that's cool, man, that you, uh, you know, you saw that or you hear that um, in that way, because, you know, we all we all take in things differently. And um, really, not, you know, I was just mainly uh, doing that for like, like, I could just see it uh, in my mind, like, you know, like you said, uh, waiting for that drop and then waiting for it and then bam, <laughs> like comes out of nowhere. So you know it's just uh something i definitely wanted to try doing and uh you know i'm always like that's just the artist in me trying different things having fun with it that's cool man um i'm gonna go into another song off of your for the future ep is that is it an ep or full full length yep yeah, so the ep is for the future yep okay so for the future ep this is your time capsule um sure. and that's a ladies and gentlemen that's something called a cassette tape it was after, <laughs> after the eight track. So yes. After, after the eight track. This song I love because of it. So I was listening to a Brandon Heath song in my car last week and I was really reminiscing about, uh, it's a song called Only Water. It's Only Water. And his whole idea of the song is like, there's a farmer standing on, on thirsty ground. He holds his breath, this is life or death. Like it's only water, but then he goes into these different um, meanings of what water can mean towards different people. I mean, like we get water every day and there's, there's people that are um, really, really fighting to get water, clean water and stay alive. Um, and so um, as the Lord would have it, I would come across this song, Agua, which means water, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I've been uh, learning a little bit more Portuguese than Spanish lately, but um this song's sick, bro. Like, I love it. It's It's got the, ah, ah, and it's got the, ah. Okay, so check it out. This is from his For the Future uh, EP, um, One V on the Track, Agua. Back when I was running around with some billets in my town, felt like I was gonna go, had me feeling so compound. Now we gotta pull them on, cause they doubt me. Left me hurting on my own, they didn't count me. Now my feet are on the ground, and I'm turning up the sound. Gotta make it hit and bound, only Jesus gets the crown. And I'm grateful to the Lord, cause he found me. He delivered me and put this arm around me. Blessings rain on me like it's I want, I want. I don't want for nothing that's not I, not I. Got the price of meal, that's a side I, Wash it down with my Blessings rain on me like it's I want, I want. I don't want for nothing that's not I, Got the price of meal, that's a side I, Wash it down with my So good. Dude, I will be like, I'm going to test that out on my, um, I have a huge subwoofer in my car, so I'm definitely going to be uh, yes, sir. that one out, dude. Um, we, we were doing search and rescue with it, um, with Mike and Zandria. We were blasting the subwoofer, dude. And, uh, but uh, I um, I love that song. I just, it's, it's, it's just the, the pronunciation of the words and uh, how there's not much lyrical content there's a normal amount of lyrical content in the chorus, but there's pocket fillers, which is really great. When you're like a lead guitar player, like 
you can really tell the difference when, when there's a lead guitar player because his job there is to fill in the pockets, to make sure there's not a moment where you're not hearing something. And so um, that's what I hear in the chorus is the echoes are, are, are boss there, dude. Um, what, what are the lyrics of the chorus? You want to walk us through those? Uh, blessings rain on me like it's agua. You know, water, uh, rain. Always had rain uh, in mind, and you know, taking, uh, taking, being aware of the different blessings that come through our lives. Like, like I said, when I wake up, man, I'm grateful for just being alive. Grateful for having a roof over my head. Grateful for having a wife, having food uh, to be able to eat. Like, just the simple things, man. So it just always rain of uh, blessings. So rain, rain on me like it's out. I don't want for nothing. That's nada. Nada is nothing, man. It's the same thing. So it's just in Spanish. Um, and I'm always thinking about how, you know, like my my wife's, uh, she was asking me what I want for my birthday. I'm like, like, what else could I want? Like, I, I'm happy. I'm fulfilled. Like, you know, I'm content with what I have. And, um, you know, like if God chooses to bless me or my wife chooses to surprise me with a gift or what she did. And, you know, I was very grateful and uh you know, happy to receive what she gave me. Um, you know, like I'm just trying not to uh, expect uh, expect things because expectation can lead to disappointment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I just try to keep an open mind, uh, stay hopeful, and uh, you know, be grateful for what I have. Um, so, I don't want nothing that's nada. God provides the meal that's asada. Asada is uh, steak. Like you make tacos out of it. So, you know, like, God provides, like... Uh, I like how you use steak, dude, not spiritual milk. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, spiritual milk is for the babies, you know? And you get, you know and a steak is, uh, once you're more mature, you're able to chew it and, and dissect it and, and taste the flavor. Um, so, you know, just a little... Uh, uh, and it rhymes with uh, nada. <laughs> so... You know, uh, yes, sir, carne asada. So, you know, like, grew up on that. My mom would make that all the time, and it was always fire. So God always provides the best, you know. And then wash it down with agua. You know, always got to Yeah, it like, brings it back around. It's crazy because there's, like, it's 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 uh, not taking for granted the things that God blesses us with, right? Like, not having expectations um, sets yourself up for a, a – of like a wholesome appreciation of what it is but water is like a constant thing like i don't realize that there are people that are struggling to have water so the fact that you're um comparing god's blessings to just something that we have every day water it's like you know like manna like god provides every day whether we realize it or not like like you can be like man like were you able to get a shower today were you able to drink were you able to you know so like god's there god's present and um that's that's also what I see in your work with youth. Like you'd said, like you try not to have expectations when you meet somebody. That was uh, when we first opened up about your first impression about me. And um, it kind of makes me wonder, like um, when people are disappointed in me, maybe they've had expectations that, that weren't met when they got to know me. So um, I think that's, again, like, you know, bleeding through your pen too. That uh, I, uh, I love that song, dude. I, I can't wait to blast that in my... 12-inch Pioneer. Hey. Uh, sure is, is it a 15? I think it's a 15. It's a single. I don't know what size it is, but... All right, so now I want to um, ask you about this song, which we've already talked about, but this is a song called Elevator, and it's really catchy. And there's a lot of your dancers in, in this video, aren't they? Oh, yeah. And this is the elevator, by the way, that I was not allowed to use. At the center. When I it saw was, this, I was like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> like, I had I had luggage. <laughs> you know, everyone's using the stairs. And my ankle was sprained. Oof. <laughs> before, was, they, you, before they prayed I, for me. <laughs> and everything got better that weekend. The music video was in progress. <laughs> oh, was it really? No, not that day. All right, so check it. Every day. Yeah. 
All right. So for songwriters and for people who listen to songs, do you want to explain the importance of a, of, of a chorus and a post chorus and, and what, what aspects should you have in those? Uh, so this was my very second song that I ever recorded. And uh, this part actually came out of uh, like a freestyle that I was doing. Okay. So I kind of like, I think the like the chorus that I had in mind was something totally different. And then I was just like freestyling. I was like, work hard every day. You know, we don't play. This is where I stay in the studio every day. And then I I think the elevator part came before it. I don't even know how it was. It's been so long since I. Made but the this. the way you placed it though is perfect because, uh, you know, a lot of times the chorus will be the main idea of the song, and it'll be the the message that you want to hit home. But then the post chorus is like a little extra cherry on top of the melody to kind of hammer it home. Up up on the elevator, like you can you can have so much fun with the post chorus because it, it could be just a. a piece of the chorus and you could just like alternate the melody and really really communicate that to people so yeah man uh you know i just trying to make a fun song and uh what i realized was that this song had a lot of potential um and i you know i didn't consider myself uh like a songwriter or like uh like an artist at the time i was really just experimenting um so the fact that this song you know turned out to be dope and fun and exciting and people have been able to jam out to it as uh, as much as uh they have like i didn't expect this song to really um you know go too crazy too far but god is taking it places that i would never expect you know now i got uh kids um that uh i've been teaching here at youth hope uh you know jamming to it almost every day you know they're telling me how they play in it all the time how does that feel? Is that is that like God reminding you of like like um like how He's using you? Like, is do you get emotional ever when you when you see that stuff? Uh yeah, I think um you know just knowing to where I was when I was making the song, you know, um I was still like you know struggling through that insecurity through depression and um. You know, I remember when I was making this song, I think it was about 2 or 3 a.m. So in, in the verse, I talk about working every day till about 2. Mm. And on this time, I was working, like, making it, like, till about 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And, um, you know, just kind of seeing how far God has uh, brought me, how he's uh, used me over the years, and how he continues to use me and use the things that I've done in a long time ago you know that chosen song uh I performed like a lot of different places uh before it even came out and I was still kind of shy because it was the first song that I ever made I was a little bit insecure because Christian hip-hop was not popping when um I made that so I you know let chosen. alone Christian hip-hop when wearing scarves right <laughs> I see it, dude. I see that scarf. Scarf, neon, green, uh, hoodie. You know, you had, you had the glasses, though, which you talked about. You had the glasses. Yeah, the glasses have always kind of been like whenever I perform dance, uh, shades and glasses were something that I always wore. Uh, now, it was kind said of... in, the, in the beginning, you said it was because you, you were nervous, but now do yeah. you do it just to kind of remind yourself of where you, your roots and where you come from? Definitely. I think uh, when I started, it started to more to hide my face. But now, uh, uh, like, I, I, partly the reason why I don't wear shades is because I've broken them. I've broken so many pairs. Uh, but also just, you know, letting people see my face. Um, whenever we would go performances, like, I would perform with them on. And there might be moments when I take them off or, like, when we would sit down and have conversations and talk to the kids. Like, I would take them off so they could see my face see my passion see see uh you know mm -hmm. the realness of it um wow because you know the shades they just look cool but you take them off and you share something real like you, you throw wanna... shade you're throwing shade throwing shade at the I, kids I don't... <laughs> uh no but you know like it's just uh something part that um you know people uh 
think it's cool. So it's just more of an image of branding type thing. Uh, chosen to run with it and uh, also to remind me of where I come from, like you said. Awesome, man. Well, we're nearing the end of the interview and I wanted to, before we do a Q&A with those who are still here, um, where can we find you? Uh, where, where do you want, I mean, it's completely evident that you want to point people to Jesus um, through, you know, the way you're living your life, through the conversation you and I had uh, through wanting to just like, like lovingly hold a youth like mentally and be like, you know who you are, like you are loved and, and uh, man, you're just like, you're exuding the love of God, the Heavenly Father. And I think you're doing an absolutely magnificent job um, being that positive male role model. And, and not a lot of people want to step up to the plate and do that. And so that's what really um, makes me super thankful to God for that, that he's given you that, that motivation and the initiative to do that. And, um, you know, giving your trusting in the Lord with all your heart and, you know, not leaning on your own understanding. He's, he's made your path straight. And like you said, you're, you feel like you're living right now in your purpose. And, and I see that God's fulfilled those desires in your heart. Um, I'm, I'm not only seeing, you know, you being Christ-like, um, you pointing them to the heavenly father, but I'm also seeing, uh, you know, God's promises being fulfilled. There are things that are happening in your life that, um, you know, God has promised based on, you know, putting him first and yeah. trusting in him. And, you know, to a certain degree, as far as like certain accomplishments, but really that, that thing your wife said about you, that peace that you have, that, that contentment, that, that thankfulness, the great graciousness. Um, I, I really do think that comes from waking up every day and, you know, surrendering over to God. Like that's, that's probably one of the most important things I heard you say. Um, so where can we find you? Where, where um, is your music? Um, do you have any future plans, any releases you, you feel led to talk about? And just another reminder, um, if you guys are really interested in um, jumping behind 1V, um, this video is going to be up forever, hopefully. Make sure you uh, DM him and, and figure out how you can donate to Youth Hope. Um, this was his his desire for his birthday was to start a fundraiser for Youth Hope, which is this nonprofit amazing company that he is now the creative arts director at. It's it's really a a, a safe place for kids. Like like we we all hope that kids can have the the safe place that we've we've wanted at at certain points perhaps in our life, and so um, that could be that could be it for you if you really want to, um, because every dollar matters with this. Um, oh yeah. Every dollar matters because there's, I imagine there's so many activities. You guys have like these ideas that you want to uh, give to the kids. I'm part of Compassion International. So it's like, um, um, I, I really understand that like every dollar matters. And so if you guys really want to help him out and jump behind him, I think it would really mean a lot to both of us if you could message him and, and uh, try to get some funds thrown that way. Where, where can we find you? And, and are there any future plans? Uh, so you can pretty much find me on any streaming platform under the name one V that's the number one, the letter V on the track, um, Spotify, Apple music, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, Pandora, uh, Amazon music, all those, uh, streaming platforms, um, Instagram, all the social medias, um, there's actually one new like uh, place that I just discovered not too long ago called Loom, L-U-M, uh, where you can actually support artists uh, in a different way. Uh, it's like a it's like a streaming platform slash social media uh, for independent artists, and it's growing a lot. And that's actually a place where like you join, you create a profile, and they give you a certain amount of um, uh, they're called, I don't know what they're called, but they're like tokens that you can gift to certain artists that you want to support. Um, that sounds dope for me, dude. Bro, it's it's dope. And they just created a thing called clubs, which I'll be promoting uh, here pretty soon. I'll be talking about these clubs and how you can join my club on Loom, um, which is almost like a Patreon or uh, something in that manner where uh, people can have exclusive uh, 
you know, contact with me, like more personal um, to where they sign up for your club. And it's like a monthly thing to support the artist. Uh, so that's something that is really dope. I'll be sharing song ideas that I've never released, um, you know, concepts that I, I might want to uh, have people's input in and, you know, just kind of bring you deeper into my creative process and have uh, those people be exclusively part of my journey. Uh, so, you know, that's something that I'll be sharing about. Um, as far as releases go, the there's a song that I have ready to go. Uh, it just needs to be mixed and mastered. And, uh, you know, it's it's just me. It's called No More. It's like YouTube, uh, if you want to hear it now, uh, but it's not on all streaming platforms yet. Uh, so I'm getting ready to, like, get that one ready so it can be mixed and mastered probably. Because the one that's on YouTube, I mixed and mastered myself. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's good. It sounds, you can hear my voice. You can hear the lyrics. But I want to get it to, you know, that, that different place for it. And it's all about, like, my uh, frustration with uh, – so many people dying, you know, so many young kids dying to violence, to, uh, you know, gun violence, uh, you know, talk about uh, all this killing in the streets. I cannot take it no more. They will want to take the kids. I cannot take it no more. Um, you know, like. I did hear that one, dude. I did yeah. hear that one. I, I was, dude, I had a lot of dishes to do. <laughs> I, I, I listened to a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, you know, there's some songs on there that, uh, yeah, probably won't go on my streaming platforms. I don't know if there are, uh, but No More is uh, the one that I plan on releasing and pushing next. Because when I dropped them on YouTube, I was just dropping them, you know, just to see what uh, what that did. Yeah. Uh, and to see what kind of uh, engagement, how people engage to them. So now I'm like kind of taking them uh, and kind of package them a little better. I might even adjust the, the graphic there and... Uh, you know, putting it on all streaming platforms, um, mix and master professionally by an engineer uh, in the area. So, you know, uh, and eventually shooting a music video to it, you know, just to bring more awareness to it. But that song is one that I'm really passionate about. Uh, I also talk about, you know, my relationship with my uh, dad, with my father. You know, uh, how... In the same song? Uh, was that? In the same song? Yeah, like the second wow. verse. I talk about, you know, forgiving my father and uh, talk about... I listen to that again, dude, because, I mean, the first part stuck out, but obviously, yeah. Yeah, so it's a deeper... My wife was, uh, you know, she was talking about how, like, I was more... How I was willing to share more about my story, so um, I want to definitely push it. The beat is, like, a beat. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it goes hard. Uh, you know, I played it for the kids, uh, some of the Youth Hope kids, and they were like, you know, bump into it. They didn't know what the lyrics were about yet because they haven't listened to it that many times. But, um, you know, it just catches your attention. So definitely want to push that one out next. Okay. Okay. And so um... projects are, are coming, like songs, collaborations, uh I'm gonna be reaching out to YouTube, man. We can get something going. All right. So, um, if you guys want to, if if you guys missed any of this, just know that uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing a series of uh, lives with friends of mine to kind of bridge the gap between you and and my new friends because I um, I don't want to like hog all of this. I want you guys to to really engage with them and re really learn from them because I think I think really there's nothing that makes us more important than all of you, but like, I think we all have something that can be learned from. Uh, so I'm very thankful I got to go live with one V. Uh, we're not done just yet, but if you guys um, just know that there's a keep it on the DL podcast that I started where the audio from this is going to become a podcast. Um, this is going to be a YouTube video where I'm going to label each of the chapters so that you can scroll down and see the topic and click it. And it'll go straight to that chapter. If you guys want to just screen record and share it with your friends uh, we talked about a lot of stuff tonight, and I'm, I'm really, really thankful that, um, you know, God was able to provide a lot of uh, wisdom in, in this space for people to learn from. Uh, 
before we open it up for Q&A for those who are here, um, I've got three questions for you. What's up? I had fun with I had fun with these ones. All right. All right. So if you had to, if, if you were tasked with making a 12 song album for one V and you were making the beats for these songs and you could only choose the packs, the samples and the sounds from one of these three instrumentals I'm, I'm about to play. Like you're, which one of these songs would you take and use for 12 other songs? And you're a producer. So as I play these, I'm going to play about a minute of each of these. Pay attention to the hi-hats, the snares and stuff, because that's all you got for 12 songs, baby. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, here's number one. <clears throat> got a female vocal to work with but uh are you still there yeah okay okay um so that's number one right if you were to could you make 12 songs of that or then there's this one here <laughs> Stark difference, stark differences there, um, and then this last one, right here. If you could choose a pack from one of these. That's it. If you, if you could make 12 songs out of just one of those with all the samples and stuff, which one would you choose to uh, fit the one V product? Yeah, this is a hard one because uh, that first one, like, it, there's so much in it. Uh, I don't know if the sounds are a little outdated now, uh, but there's way more to work with, I think. Um, the second one is, uh, I think that's Timbaland produced that, I think. You can hear, like, the beatboxing in the background. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and then the third one, uh, that's, uh, you know, the, what you mean, what you mean. Uh-huh. Classic. Uh, there's some bells in there. Uh, there's that little hit, the doo -doo, um, and then there's uh, a little vocal in the background. Uh I think I could work with uh, the first one better. The first there's, one better? There's more to work with. Um, different instrumentals, hits. Um, yeah, there, there's just more to work with. So I can take out stuff, make it simpler, and make it kind of like how that is, pitch down melodies and, um, you know, different things, uh, some of the instruments that are in there, and, you know, really chop them up or, you know, get more creative with it, but for 12 songs. Yeah. I mean, like, so. Now, have you ever heard that? Oh, yeah, that's an old. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we won't, we won't glory, we won't, like, share. But, no, like, um, the beat is that, dope. The beat is dope. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, like, um, as, as a Christian producer, like, kudos to you, man. Like, I'm, I'm praying uh, that, 
you know, you'll be able to like, God will continue to fulfill people's itch, you know, for that, 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 that music, you know, that, that crunch. And, uh, cause, uh, you know, people getting off the secular rap, like, um, they're, they're going to be looking for it. They're going to be looking for it. And so you've got this awesome responsibility that you really enjoy that you've just got down pat. That's going to help shepherd people into a more positive listening experience. Um, so that was, a. Uh, that was a little mixture of songs there. Oh yeah. Uh, another question is uh, how much would these be worth if I shine them up? Cause you in shoes, bro, you in shoes. I can't find the price of these anywhere. What are these? They're pink, they're orange. Uh, I don't know, honestly. Like I, I like dope shoes, but I'm not like a shoe head. Like some of my students, they are, uh, you know, they know all the colors, the the brands, how much they worth. Um, so I honestly would not no. be able to tell you. I right. don't know, man. All right. Which um, now the last question was really hard for me because I just I didn't want to like name other artists. Like I didn't want it to turn into a negative thing, but I wanted to ask something along the lines. Like I, I think I should throw it out somewhat. I wanted to ask, like, like if you could join one of these three people in the studio earlier in their careers, which one would you want have wanted to join? And and you know, I was I was imagining like, man, they they reach out to you. You have three appointments booked, but but you can only make one of them, and you have to go back in time. To ride that you have to ride that thing on your movie cover uh, <laughs> back in time to make yeah. movies. and i was thinking about 50 cent if i was your best friend you know as as a as a kid really starting to record music and and you know writing that song about his girlfriend like what what kind of what kind of uh influence could you have had you know but but i didn't want it to turn into like oh you know like mm -hmm. their careers could have been better like i, I didn't want to compare yeah. But like I, I think about Lil Wayne, I think about uh, Fifty Cent, I think about all of these rappers, um, and I don't know what what they're if if they're regretting anything about their careers. But like um, there, it really is something about having the right person around you that can shepherd you and and really invest in your goals and and help you communicate. And I wondered, like, which studio sesh you would have wanted to be a part of. But I ended up changing it to this question, which I think, I think you'll enjoy. Um, if you could have attended one of these recordings, assuming they all did it in one room, which one would you have wanted to be a part of? Just, just to be there, just to, mm -hmm. to watch. Um, Man Up Anthem. The 116 Man Up Anthem. Lecrae, KB, Triple E, Tadashi, Derek Minor, Andy Miniel, Show Baraka. Or the more recent 116 mashup. 1K Few, Aaron Cole, Holvey, Tadashi, Tommy Royal, Triple E, and Wande. Now, you might have to just like say, you know, I wanted to be next to this person more, but like, just personally, like, which one would have been cooler? Like you can even answer that on a basis of like, which one would have been more impressive to see them lay down or like, you know, just which studio session would you, would you have wanted to be present for? Uh, I think the more, more recent one, um, uh, just because, uh, one kid, few Aaron Cole, Holvey, Tadashi, Tommy Royal, Tripoli and Wande. Yeah. Um, uh, just because I can relate to the sound more and, uh, you know, just, uh, seeing like, you know, Tommy, uh, yeah, Tommy, 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 Tommy. Uh, I'm like getting my Spanish accent on. Uh, you know, Tommy, uh, <laughs> like Hispanic coming in, you know, like repping for the culture. Uh, I don't know exactly where he's from, but, you know, like I know he makes music in Spanish uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, like him and seeing him in uh, like What Up RG, like, you know, representing and, um, uh, I know he wasn't in that, but, uh, you know, 1K Few makes music that um, I really vibe out to. Uh, Holy's dope. Uh, one Day's dope. Uh, so, you know, just uh, I feel like that one would be um, more, f it'd just be more impressive, I think. 
Would you have been like eating something the whole time? Like, would you have like crunched a potato chip and they would have yelled at you or something? What's your studio attitude? What do you, <laughs> what's, <laughs> where was I going with that question? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would have had crunchy food. Maybe I would have, but I wouldn't be eating it uh, while they're recording. And even then, like, they probably have like a booth, soundproof booth that, they you know, probably they were... had, like catering or something, like for the right time. Oh, yeah. Probably got like cheese and crackers and <laughs> sparkling water. Uh, I've done enough talking. We've got some questions. Um, thank you so much for joining me, man. We've got Sarah Foth. Um, she is a friend of the Extreme Tour. Um, she had she had some questions. Um, she had said we should do a song together. Yeah. Uh, she likes the third beat out of all of those. Um, yeah. That's, uh... Uh, what you mean? That song is dope. I think I made a dance to it a while back, too. Um, she says you should check out Curtis Hoppy. Oh, yeah. I've, I've definitely checked out Curtis Hoppy before. Uh, he was making a lot of music, uh, like, with the Kingdom Music uh, crew. Uh, and he's, uh, I think he was in the Rapzilla thing not too long ago. So. Was he? Uh, you uh, got me on Krugs now, dude. Was that? You got me on Krugs now. I, I reached out to him. I started like listening to some of his like early posts. I'm like, this is he's just sitting there in front of a mic, like, like again and again. Like I, I don't have to go back to secular um, songs that fulfill me with the speed and with the tongue twisting because God's yeah. going to provide a substitute for me to listen to. Um, do you have any questions, Sarah? Um, for for does anybody have any questions about working with youth? Uh, I know I had a, yeah, anybody at all still here? Uh, you answer all the, you asked all the right questions, man. <laughs> there, There's a lot tricky with youth that I was going to ask you, like, what would you do in this situation and um, something like that. But, um, you know, working with youth can be very tricky because you do have to stay above reproach. You do have to build yeah. trust. But in those situations where um, I've had someone message me and say, um, hey, I'm planning on running away from home. Don't tell my parents. And it's like, well, my goal is to make sure that you have a, a healthy relationship with your parents. And so this is not something I would want to, I would want, not want to yeah. disobey the trust of the parents, right? So like those certain things happen all the time. And and um, be, because you have a team around you and because you're living life in the open, like um, it's, I think it's proven very beneficial. So Sarah yeah. says, my ministry that God blessed me with was out on tour with both of you. Ah, Sarah has a beautiful pieces logo. Um, she has a beautiful pieces ministry. Nice. Yeah. I would love to check it out, learn more about that. Um, but yeah, I think you, you talked about, uh, you know, being working with the youth can be challenging. I think definitely having a team of people uh, around that uh, have been working with the youth for a long time, uh, uh, is very helpful and I can always go to, you know, uh, one of the, my, you know, fellow teammates here and ask them a question, like what to do in this situation. And, you know, it's all about helping the, that youth at the end of the day. Uh, so, you know, if we need to get other people involved, you know, that's, that's, um, you know, uh, that's what we need to do, but definitely, uh, being prayful, praying about things, being cautious about um, the environment that we create, um, and then also just uh, being cautious about uh, you know how you handle yourself in public, um, because you know there can be somebody um, that sees you out in the streets, and if you are out, like cussing somebody out, then they'll look at you like, "What is going on? I thought you were a Christian." Like, yeah about god or you're teaching me about the bible and you're talking to this yeah you know? the world's watching yeah you know so there's a lot more eyes on you there's a lot more pressure um but god has been building me up for things like this um with uh being a dancer performing being in the public eye um there's uh expectations um uh, and then it's also you know just being true being honest um uh, you know knowing that uh, we're not perfect and, and letting them know like who the perfect one is, you know? Yes. Yes. Dude, it has been absolutely awesome. Uh, Sarah had said the hygiene kicks kits. So like I, I, uh, 
I didn't go on tour this year, and I'm not sure when the last time you were on tour, but she had had hygiene kits prepared for the extreme tour this year nice. to go into communities. Um, yeah, dude, thank you so much for joining me, and just uh, I hope it's my prayer that people would uh, really glean into you know, the reality of where the youth are at and really learn about an effective approach. Um, you know, it's, it's huge to not have expectations. I mean, you have high expectations for the youth. Let's, let's get that straight. You've got high expectations for everybody. And so um, if you're out there, just know that um, you can undo horrible circumstances that you've been through um, by, you know, Re investing in another person's life yeah and uh, so dude it's been great man i got more i got way more questions but we we topped zandria's interview zandria's was 229 minutes ours was three hours so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, gonna be a part one and a part two podcast i'm gonna have to split it in half yeah we'll have to uh definitely you know do this again man it's uh it's been an honor getting to talk to you on a deeper level and uh you know kind of do this on a on a public space so other people can see and uh you know we'd love to do it again and you know uh tag me when you release this or wherever you share it um i would love to you know get it out there as well and keep it up man you're doing a great job you're you're thanks you're man. man i'm trying Trying to stay yeah. out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a great way to do that. Cool, man. Well, you have a blessed night, man, and uh, I'll uh, I'll be pushing out this content for the next week. So, um, hopefully, hopefully, I, I you know with uh, with some of my new songs coming out, hopefully I can like maybe drive out and get a B and B and stay there for a week, and maybe you can help me come up with some moves for the tour next year. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'll get a budget together. Right, <laughs> yeah, I get a budget. Uh, I'm about to start, like, recording, uh, like, tutorials for YouTube. Uh, so people that want to learn uh, some different moves, I encourage you to look up how to do the, uh, uh, how to glide, how to do the glide? moonwalk. Yeah, glide. moonwalk gliding, because that's the kids always ask me if I know how to moonwalk, and it always impresses them. There's a, uh, there's, a, there's a shuffle version of the moonwalk that, you know, they're doing these things where they do, like, slow time, and then they just double time it. Oh. Um, uh, 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 Learn a classic one, though. That That's always a good one. Gliding dance. All right. All right. Gliding footwork. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I actually see the guy that I like to watch. No, no, no. The guy I like to watch is 1V, okay? Yes, sir. Hey. No other guests. I like to watch. Come on now. Soon. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for praying for both of us, for what God has called both of us to do for the kingdom. We appreciate you, and we hope you have an amazing night. Thanks, man. You too. All I'll right. catch you later. Deuce.